hey, I promised you that these weren't all just going to be about rap. So here's the proof behind that one. Today we're going to break down a couple Stoner Rock albums with my homie Jules from Grey Pilled. Uh, what's up, bro? On, tell, tell people where to find you, by the way, since you're you're still coming up. You need to pump those numbers. We're going to help you. Yeah, still coming up, man. Um, what's going on, guys? Grey Pilled Podcast. Um, I'm on Instagram at Grey Pilled underscore podcast. Uh, I'm on Twitter or X at a Grey Pill Pod. I'm on Rumble. I'm on YouTube. It's all Grey Pilled Podcast. Um, capital G, capital P. Um, I'm on Odyssey and BitChute as well. And uh, maybe starting like a dollar a month, little Patreon soon. Um, so that should be fun. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah, man. So I'm curious, what does Stoner Rock mean to you? Like, I didn't even, I haven't looked up the the Webster's definition or the Wikipedia definition. I've just kind of understood what it means after searching for it so many times on like pirate music sites. So now I know right. the pirate music sites as Stoner Rock. That's kind of what's molded my impression of it. Yeah, dude. Um, I got into it at a very, I mean, I wouldn't say a very early age, but like ninth grade freshman in high school i mean for stoner rock i'd say that that'd be a pretty early age uh so what year is this uh 2006 so okay. this is the year that the sword age of winters came out and i had an older buddy of mine who was like 20 21 you know half of my friends were like almost my mom's age growing up man i i just i I hung out with uh, the older crowd, like me and my friends. You know, we were like the first hardcore band in Jackson. And so we would play at the tattoo shop and everything. And everyone there, you know, they all listen to Stoner Rock. Uh, that's what they would play in the tattoo shop. That's what. Uh, so I. Uh, I was drawn to it, you know, and I guess because I, I smoked weed at a young age, you know, is that required, uh, uh to like stoner rock that you have to be a stoner I mean, dude, it helps. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's up to you. You know, I don't know too many straight edge people who are fans of weed eater or electric wizard, you know? So, but uh so you started talking about um age of winters by the sword or to have yeah, that dude. So I, i've never heard of this one before um so well, this, this it, came out right like this this is exactly when you're talking about 2006 right so this album oh, comes yeah. out and you hear when it came out yeah man uh i i was in the ninth grade and uh dude it was like Hearing it for the first time, and when you you know when you smoke for the first time or whatever, it, it went hand in hand, dude. Like, and it was, I was a like, guitar oh hero too. So if you're, if you're smoking and playing PlayStation, whatever. It was come across it. Yeah, dude. They they got big pretty fast. Uh, one of their songs, uh, Winter Wolves, or Winter's Wolves, uh was on like HBO's music playlist or whatever. I I remember seeing that like a couple years after it came out. Um but the whole album is basically like Norse mythology and uh talking about like you know Freya the do you know the daughter of Nord, I think is his name, um who's the sea god in Norse mythology. Found that interesting. Uh so I'm, I'm, I, and then you know the, my favorite song on there is called "The Horn Goddess," dude. It's it's, uh, it flows perfectly. And then at the end, there's like a crescendo where it 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 all just like it makes a full circle, and it's beautiful. Uh, but definitely talking about like the moon goddess. Uh, the I'm pretty sure like. May, maybe the pagan moon goddess. I don't know. I'm or maybe well, I got the, I got the lyrics pulled up here. So it looks like it's oh, out on an instrumental called Celestial Crown. 
and then well, no yeah. any of these uh these Norse gods. So this one's Bariel's blade. Yeah, I I'm I looked up who ba- who Bariel was, and I, I I can't really find it. It may be more like Dungeons and Dragon lore. I I'm not sure. Well, he's got I Slayer of the that. Spider Priests. Which sounds D and D, but I want to know. Like, I, I actually have no idea what Norse mythology includes. Are there spider priests in North North mythology and silver dude, blood? I mean, you know, dude, I'm I'm really into like Sumerian stuff, like all the Anunnaki. Uh, but I've been delving into Norse mythology more and more, and uh, trying to link similarities and whatnot. And the more I get into it the more I'm seeing it's really just the bloodline of Inky. Uh, and I mean, you see that with a lot of these stoner rock bands, dude, uh, a lot of esoteric symbolism, tons of occultism, tons of pagan worship and Wiccan culture. And, you know, which as a teenager, you don't even recognize it. It's just cool to you. You know what I mean? You're drawn to it, obviously. Do you think it's uh, evil? Do you think do you think any of this this stoner rock talking about like golden thrones and silver no. blood and no, no. So you're not you're not gonna go to hell if you just put this on blast? Absolutely not. No, nah, okay. dude. Heard, I think it's all about it how from, you interpret it. There's, there's many ways to and in, to interpret this music, just like there's many ways to interpret the Bible, dude. You know, there's seven different ways, of course, seven. That's a very important number, dude. I got home last night and I was going to put, I was going to send it to you. My mileage said three, 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 seven, seven. And I was just like, what the fuck? Dude? That's great. Don't, don't wind up in the movie 23. Cause that's, <laughs> that's not a fun place to be at where you're just no, like, no. numbers everywhere. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't see 23 too much. Um, yeah. Just the, uh, the 33, I usually see daily to be honest with you. It's it's kind of uh, un- unbelievable, uh, but happens. It, this album's quite a like a juxtaposition between this kind of like Norse lady, uh, sort of like a like a prisoner. Look at the cover, yeah, Leia. man. But then like the lyrics is just about like I'm gonna chop down your forest and my axe trip and <laughs> bloody battles. I'm not giving basically my they're all. like uh, embodying the Vikings, I guess, and. Uh, Singing from the you know from their point of view maybe. All right, well, here, uh, here's the horn goddess that that you were saying was one of the good ones. Yeah. Um. Dude. So yeah, we've got serpent of the earth writhes between glacial things. Are we talking flat earth now? Is this like it Arctic says wall? it's between glacial thighs? I don't know why it's oh. <laughs> well. Um, it's because this is like a, a online sourced. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So anyone can just kind of throw this up here. I hear you. Yeah, no. Uh, okay, gl- yeah, dude. glacial thighs makes a much different uh, image than glacial things. Look at the next uh, little chorus. Yeah, holy nectar flowing from a celestial teat. Lips, Lips of blood, of blood and fire gorging, gorging on, on the sacred feast. Bounty of the goddess offered by the avatar. White blood spills with the singing of the scimitar. I don't What's think it says blood? scimitar. I think it says centaur. Maybe it says scimitar. I don't know. Um, scimitar would make sense because that would be an actual would make like, sense. something that would chop your head off. But what's I don't know what white blood is. Is that like white people white blood, blood cells or white people <laughs> blood? Maybe I don't like, know, can you dude. can you spill someone's white blood cells only and like let them keep the red blood cells? Maybe I, I maybe I used to just think they were talking about a scimitar because I wanted it. <laughs> It sounded like the it, word, it makes you know, sense when you're it would younger. Be a scimitar because, yeah, this is like this curved blade. Yeah, well, right you here. know, when you're younger, you hear certain lyrics and you think it says something completely different until you get older. And then you kind of like understand it more. And you're like, oh, wait, have have you ever heard that with any music where you think it says something and you never really looked into it? My version's like, right, usually. I don't, 10 I don't years care. later. Even if I find out later that they meant something <laughs> else, like they were wrong. You still about say that. what you say. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is interesting, yeah. too, because this uh, scimitar is like Persian or Asian or Middle Eastern. So it's it's weird that it makes an appearance in this particular 
Dude. song, I guess. Unless, I mean, this might be what you're talking about, that passage of knowledge from the Middle East. We're going to get into that region. Uh, when we cover Dope Throne by Electric Wizard. Uh, they have a song with the title in it called Altar of Melektaus, which is from the Yazidi tribe. I think that's a Muslim tribe. Is it? Okay, okay. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, you're I the expert. Know. No. I'm Aren't not. you recently converted Muslim? <laughs> you know me. Uh, oh, man. Christ is king. Iron ships uh, on a sea of blood. Black wind fills their soul. I mean, I wish that we could just play. Like, it's so tempting to just hit this play button. We can all listen to it together, but we can't. But I've linked. Uh, I made a playlist before this episode. And if I was smart enough, I would have done it for all the other episodes. Too. Everybody go there. and listen to this song right now. You will not regret it. This well, Iron Swan. I- Iron Swan. Well, that Iron Swan's a great song, too, dude. The You actually get, like, tricked into it. The whole, like, first minute is a very, very, like, s- like soft, sweet, uh, pagan druidic melody and then it just gets like very like thrash metal like super fast and it's it's fucking awesome um so yeah if, if you haven't heard this L- lament for the aurochs i don't know what an yeah, auroch is either an auroch is like a uh a cow yeah 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 ah. okay. yeah so we've got like the um the the two-horned uh sort of it, fertility symbolism right yeah 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 and i think it's a, an, an extinct cow too if i'm not india mistaken. and north africa again not necessarily lining up directly with uh what i would consider they, like nordic tales well i guess right here both are and germanic are, and germanic celtic. And celtic yeah okay. wild ox so we're learning yeah, this man, is an so, educational uh, show so this is lament no it's great dude the, the, the two-horned um ox essentially so okay yeah, dude. And I mean, they have a song called Freya. And I mean, that's the goddess, you know, that's the Norse goddess of love and fertility. Um, you know, the Ishtar of Scandinavia. I like this line right here. Long gone are the ages of the alchemists. Now there are none who know the secrets of the earth. Wow. Uh, shout out Juan. Uh, shout out Juan, man. Yeah, no, that's all. He doesn't know. He doesn't know anything. They're telling us right here. No one knows that. So now, now he thinks that he does. But this song proves that he, he does more than me. Lament for the passing of the Arox, which now we know are like the two horned ox from India, yeah. Middle East. This is another fast song too, man. It actually it it, it goes super hard. Uh, it, this is actually a good. There, there's a few good songs on here you, you could either get stoned to or you could work out to, honestly. Uh, when also maybe, this uh, this no. worm that they're talking about was a name for like a dragon. That's always been really interesting to me. Oh, uh, yeah. Always. Because he has this whole like Illuminati worms uh, thing that kind of dovetails into these, yeah, these no. Germanic dragons. I, I made him an AI song for the <laughs> Illuminati worms. I plan on sending it to him ASAP, dude. That's pretty funny. That's wild. Okay, okay. So we're 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 we keep learning. So now, and we've got the basilisk there, which is another Face alchemical flames. representation. The phoenix burns. There you go. You got another alchemical representation in the phoenix. So you're sure if you listen to this, you're not going to hell because they're doing alchemy. I mean, dude. I, I mean, unless like. <laughs> in a way, I mean, I don't think you're performing alchemy while listening to it. I mean, mm. this one's interesting. It says the the march of the lore is technically an it, instrumental, instrumental, in but movements. in eight eight movements. So yeah, isn't that weird? I saw that when I when when I looked at it, man. The spider's descent. Yeah, so misery the of the plague born. Um, iron ships on seas of blood. Invocation of Alora, and I don't even know what Alora is. I should have. That's my bad. I should have looked into that, dude. That's. That's on me, bro. Uh, I still don't know what it is. There's a bunch of Elder Scrolls. Is this like an Elder Scroll song? See, Could that's be. what I'm saying. There's, there's like, dance, there's right? like a certain video game like uh, resemblances in here that I see, and I'm like, wait, what? And then you read stuff, you know, like the last song that we were reading about. Yeah, I want to know now if if Halora is just a video game or like a Dungeons and Dragons creature. Or is this from some sort of like folklore? 
some sort of pagan mythos. Who knows? Is Alora from folklore? Let's see. No. Now, I don't trust JetGBT because it lies to you, but this is a good little baseline just to see if there's like conventional answer. So, no, it doesn't sound like Alora is from big. anything. So maybe maybe they just came up with that name. The Black Web is spun. Mystery of the Plagueborn. Uh, I assume misery. that's what, like 20 or Misery of the Plagueborn. So yeah. that's like anyone born in like 2020 through 2021. Uh, Spider's Descent, Conquest of Kingdoms and Age of Winters. So they, they yeah. end on the title of the album, I guess. So this would be the the namesake for the whole album is probably this instrumental. Yeah. Well, I think the last song is called e- Ebathron. And what's and that mean? I don't know. I looked it up and I couldn't find shit on it, Thomas. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it's all just self-referential to the sword. Um, uh, so, it, like you said, something they may have made up. Let's see. Let's see if JatGPT wants to lie to us. Nope. Sounds like a name that could belong to a character, blah, blah, blah. Like Alora doesn't immediately correspond to any well known myths or legends. Okay. That's cool, though. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. They're making mythology. up their own little lore or something. Yeah, man. Black blades on their hands. Obey. Oh, man. This one's sending you to hell. I don't care what Jules says here. I'm going to add, I'm just going to warn everyone not necessarily listen play to this song out loud yeah i have a weed eater shirt on with flag <laughs> burning on it he comes from cities of darkness to suffer harlots and fools solitude is his jewel that kind of sounds like me Were they okay i mean the i i uh definitely co-sign this album uh in terms of lyrical content and just like musical merit so even if it sends Dude. you to hell, the jewel says it won't. I say it will, but I think it's it's definitely worthy of a listen. This we need like a slapped, dude, and someone fucking stole it from me. Someone stole the CD from me, like the actual CD. And I'm if, I, if we have to rate this album in particular uh, on like a one to ten scale, and let's say ten means like you absolutely have to go out and buy it, um, and like a five just means you have to listen to it. I'd say. Probably an eight or nine. Okay. Okay. So it's if you not an absolute. Like it, go and grab it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not my favorite, you know, but it's, uh, it's and, and, Yeah. To, and to be clear, the show is not necessarily about picking your favorite music. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got and, a uh, little bit of a, a loose theme going. I guess it's starting out with uh, like the adoption of fertility rights from different cultures and working their way into and i think that that's going to be really popular like for some reason paganism and worshiping dark lords and anything that's kind of like pre-christianity tends to be really big in oh, yeah, like the, the metal worlds and stoner rock and do you, like is there a reason why you think that that's so popular like how come there isn't like really badass stoner rock jesus songs uh, uh the church the uh dogma and uh in, indoctrination from like the fear-based church leaders you know the southern baptists and all that uh grow you know growing up i i was pushed away from the church just by the people you know we're just very just they just weren't good people you know you didn't feel they they, they weren't filled with christ's love or what they claimed to be you know and well, I also uh, remember though, like growing up, like the churches around me threw hardcore concerts like regularly. That's almost, we did too. That was yeah. like my gateway into hardcore music was through yeah, bro. concerts happen at the church. That's where most of our shows happen. And uh unfortunately, you know, something we would always end up doing something uh hedonistic yeah, there maybe maybe not christ-like yeah, <laughs> but, yeah no but, but i mean the like, it's, it's so line. weird that so many people get their start in like these these uh church circuits but oh, yet yeah there isn't a lot that break into mainstream and stay like churchy you know what i mean like they end up oh, just like sure. oh, we, we worship the dark lord now <laughs> yeah dude i mean you'd have your christian metal core and and stuff but uh you know they're uh not many people were into this when I was, you know, I guess I was 
14 in the ninth grade, 13, 14. Uh, not many people were into this kind of music, and you see a lot more people now. There's some Christian metal bands. I'm not sure. I, I oh yeah, that. for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of, some of the lyrics that I distinctly remember from when I was in high school is like like mid late nineties. It was just like talking about like um, bathing in blood, but they were talking about like the blood of the Christ, blood of Christ. You know, like they were like they were being washed of their sins. But it was yeah. just like I'm oh, bathing in blood. Like it didn't sound <laughs> Christian, but if you just looked at the lyrics and didn't listen to it, you're like, yeah. okay, I get. I guess it's a Christian song. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, dude. Uh, you're not gonna find any uh, stoner rock Christian music out there i mean uh, i feel like you should man i mean i feel is, like you should dude yeah i mean i, I bet you i did you david koresh would have stoner rock christian music in his compound he would he would it probably I be good you. too dude i bet he um, had a great taste in music way better than most uh like you know parishioners i would assume Shots we'll never fired. be able never, to know man care. we'll never be able to know dude yeah we never will know we should I mean, maybe that could be an interesting like try and find out like david koresh's playlist musical like, taste what, <laughs> yeah bro like what what albums did he die with in that room and we can just go over that i don't know i'm, I'm just saying it out loud That's so i remember to dude. do it later because that no. sounds like it could be a cool theme you know i'll do that with like you. what like what was jim jones listening to uh in guyana and uh you know people's temple like, dude definitely there. cannibal corpse like do you know that there was a, <laughs> there was a people's temple Look, People's Temple uh, vinyl album. It's like a like a Baptist. Oh, yeah, dude, oh man, I've been on my wish list for so long. Um, but yeah, they're going for like five hundred dollars or something. But it's a, it's a album called "He's Able" by the People's Temple Choir. They're Does it sound like the the uh, soundtrack to Mandy? I don't you know. I would, I'd have to listen to them back to back. But look, it's even got Jim Jones uh, in the bottom left of the back here. I've I've been trying to track and copy down, and the cheapest like, I've seen was like two hundred. But like, wow. I'm not going to pay two hundred for no, with, absolutely honestly, not. mediocre music. If at best with a bunch of kids on the <laughs> yeah, no, dude, I'm but I, I really wanted to grab this just so I could sample it and like do something with it. But oh, yeah, for so, sure. There's any super fans out there that happen to have "He's Able" by the People's Temple Choir, or uh, you, you can know, just crowdfund. Uh, yeah, I'll make good use. Yeah, I, if I crowdfunded it, I I can find better things to do than <laughs> drop it on a people's I know, fire album. Uh, <laughs> and funding whoever, like, just imagine if if someone charged this and I sent five hundred bucks to someone, like, what are they doing with five hundred bucks that they had this and they were like holding on it? I don't know. Donating it to the people's. <laughs> sure, sure. All right, I'll I'll take over the Whatever next. That is now the Church of Scientology. Here. Yeah, bro. So, what you got? So I um. Again, like Stoner Rock was fairly new to me. Uh, just th like that being called that as a gender, someone shouted out here that Black Sabbath was like one of the OGs. Uh, they were of this. Yeah, they were and the I, I honestly, originators. Yeah, that was started at all. Yeah, and man. another. Uh, they were the originators. These, they usually uh, derive influence from like Led Zeppelin. So I guess Led Zeppelin type music kind of falls into the. To me, stoner rock, I guess, which is this is the wrong definition. This is my definition that I've developed for myself. There but is no like, wrong definition, bro. No, it's it's like like um heavy seventies rock um like yeah. style. But if it's played in twenty sixteen, it's almost guaranteed to be stoner rock. Like if it's no, sounds like from the seventies, it's stoner. You're rock. absolutely correct, dude. Uh, I mean, you got bands like Sabbath, Pentagram, Saint Vitus. Uh, I mean, Lucifer's Friend. Who I posted, you know, that clip, dude. That band's sick, dude. Like that, You're that band going to hell for listening to that one. Lucifer. Yeah, friend. but that fucking band's awesome. They use a French <laughs> Is horn. Is it it's worth it? <laughs> they use a French horn, dude. Like okay. it, oh, it, that, that actually gets them out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it first time I heard that, I was like, oh first time I heard that, I'm pretty sure I, I was probably pretty stoned. So it it <laughs> it, it sounded good. Um, so which Witchhiker, so the, well, the the group is called Weed Druid, Weed Druid, like all, That's all awesome. together, um, yeah. And it's known as Stoner Doom Metal, which honestly, the the addition of Doom in there makes me like it even more because now it's almost like slower, deeper. Um, there, it, there's a big difference between Doom Metal and Stoner Metal, bro. There's right, but, like but uh, Stoner Doom Metal is like the like a blending of those two worlds. 
Well, uh, some examples of doom metal would be Candle Mass. Uh, Never heard of them. Merciful Fate. Never heard of them. King Diamond. He he Never. was part of Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. Uh, You're not they're selling from, me on it. They're no, from <laughs> Belgium. Doesn't give any credit, <laughs> dude. Merciful Fate. Look up King Diamond. Merciful Fate. You will not regret it. Doing a even just looking into it, dude, is like worth it. All right. It's well, we can look, we can have parts it. two and three and four and five. And we shout can out do. 30, there's 33 people watching on Rumble live right now. So you're all oh, going to hell, shit, dude. You're all going to make. What did I fucking right tell now. you about this 33, man? It's like the it's like the ghost of Jacob Rothschild <laughs> calm down, calm following down. me around. So uh, we drew it. I honestly, I went on like a, a complete binge for a while, where I just found one artist album, and there's a website that I I feel like I don't want to mention its name out loud because it's like Fight Club rules. But there's a Word. website that, that you can go to, and I'll let you know afterwards. Cool. Um, okay. It, it rhymes with uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character in The Matrix. That's all I'm going to say. It rhymes with that. It's not quite that. Uh, but there's this there's music website and you go to and it's kind of like an OG underground where you can download all these torrents and stuff. But the, the best thing about it is that it has this really interesting uh, like listener driven branching of like oh if you like this group you'll probably like this one and this one and what's what makes it good is that it's not coming from amazon or itunes or amazon where they're pushing music at you that they get a higher profit margin like for example amazon and itunes and spotify and any of them they are never going to recommend an album that's not on their platform or not making money for them in a million years but if you go on to like the you know open seas if you're like sail on the seven seas and you got a pirate patch on your eye well, now all of a sudden, everyone's like, yeah, man, if you like We Drew It, you'll like these 50 other groups. And that's where right. I find a whole bunch of music that otherwise you would never find in kind of like the mainstream. So does that make me a yeah. a, a stoner, doom metal hipster in a way? Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. Dude. Yeah, thank you. I've been practicing my half-court shots. It finally paid <laughs> off. Um, I'm, I'm Hopefully I can do a full-court shot next time. So shout me out. And Bong Bongzilla, Bongzilla. I, uh, I know yeah, I've dude. heard them. I've got an album or two. They didn't make the Bong- cut this time, but they will next time. They're more sludge metal. Like I said, there's probably the a difference between sludge metal. Okay, dude, hear me out. <laughs> so sludge metal is stoner metal. You're this up, man. No, I, I, I swear I'm not, guys. Y'all tell him what sludge metal is. Sludge metal is stoner metal, but with like kind of vocals if you listen to i hate god or graves at sea whoa 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 or weed eater weed eater is a sludge metal band they're not stoner metal they're you know so sludge metal is also known as sludge doom there you go see i that's the part of growing up like being in an underground music scene or like a diy music scene is you get into these very very uh Sub genres like uh, I don't know what how else to say it. Uh, there you go, sub genres. There you go. See, uh, you get into it's these different genres that kind of put these different bands in these classifications, uh, and they're very secular. They're, they're not many people know about them, and I mean, I liked it that way, you know. Because then when people did hear them, they were like, who's that? I'm just like, nobody. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Go back to or, uh, to your, your will. Or, your or you tell them. You know, you tell them. But, the, um, I, this is selling me slow tempo, tuned down guitar. I assume that means drop D or something equivalent. Definitely drop, drop D. D. Yeah, bro. Me Nihilist and my little lyrics, brother, man. Poverty, me and my, drug uh, addiction, and pollution. Yeah. Dude, me, th- we could totally do like a... um. Like a like a hardcore leftist climate like anti climate change album, but do it in like, oh, a, dude. like a sludge doom stoner oh, rock style. Sorry. Stop polluting the oceans, dude. We'll figure it out. There's yeah. There. Me, uh, me, me, and my little brother, man. We yeah, we we play this shit all the time. Whenever he he comes in town from Hattiesburg, right there. there you go. I hate God, Crowbar, who are both from New Orleans. Um. Shouts out, Nola. I have, I have a couple friends that live there. Um, I hate God is regardless of the name, dude. 
I'm not even clicking on this. I don't Your want that on my fucking music soul, is bro. sick, dude. It's like listening to anal cunt. You know? I don't want. I don't want any of that on my soul. I don't want a mattress on my back. So let let's let's go on to to weed druid here because we can yeah, man. we let's, can venture on. Let's the stick other. with the stoner rock. Yeah, yeah let's, now, we'll, well, we'll pass to the dark sludge side. Rock existed. I'm kind of excited to look into sludge rock now, bro. I told you we and we can get into like thrash metal. What is I, I can expand on everything. Sludge like, is coc. What does that even mean? And well, acid, is, is acid bath a, an album or group? I don't know what CLC genre means. I'm interested, man. This is this is like a new, a whole new genre for me. So okay, that, that one's an instrumental. This is an easy one. And actually, I it was it took me a long time to go through and pick out my favorite stoner rock albums that had lyrics in them. Because yeah. the more I look through it, like uh, I tell this to a lot of people, but I can't listen to music with lyrics with if I'm working because I'm usually I'm writing or I'm doing something that's like involves me like s- s- reading something and then trying to keep it in my mind as I do something else and incorporate yeah. that and then take like there's a, this constant exchange of information. And if I hear a single lyric that takes me out of that, like. Um, I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. Like I'll start like biting my my tongue or something. Like I'm just I lose all coordination. So I typically listen to instrumental only. But these ones absolutely have uh, some lyric songs. So another instrumental though, God the Goat Smoker. Instrumental, Hot <laughs> Tracer. Instrumental. They didn't feel like they, they they got way too stoned to write lyrics, dude. I I mean, but this kind of represents like uh, my favorite type of stoner rock album. Um, hey, yeah, I mean, I mean, it 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 is what it is. You know, it's something they put out. So, you know. So th- I'm this gonna listen to that later, dude. Instrumental album from Weed Druid, and it's got Zompire, Into the Acid Swamp, God the Goat Smoker, Pot Tracer. The final Houdini seance, Vikings, Lee Van Keef, Todd der Grass, which I, I'm gonna just assume that means touch some grass, like they're just like throwing shade at you. Hell yeah, Rich Hiker and Medusa Salem, I mean, and they've got a bunch of other albums too. But it sure. almost yeah, took, they almost look like they could be like a Rage Rasta kind of group. But it's yeah, I mean he has a Kai Lessa shirt on, so I mean I'm 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 sure Kai Lessa. great man. Kai, uh, there, uh, dude. I saw them with. Uh, who did I see them? With? Sludge Converge. metal. All right. This is great. Like every guess, every, one uh, time every album that comes them. up is going to be a sludge metal now. Since I just heard that word, I forgot. I, I've seen them twice, but they have two drummers, or they used to, or maybe they still do. Um, they're heavy. They're heavy as shit. They uh, they have a. Uh, it's really hard to keep up out. with a lot of these groups that are like get real hard into edgy material because they cycle out musicians nonstop, like lead singers, drummers, guitar players, like almost every one of these groups they've got. Like oh, the, dude, the past members is three to four times the size of the current members. Yeah, the DIY hardcore scene, especially like New York hardcore and stuff is real. Uh, they all like like. Some guy who, you know, is the vocalist for one band does, you know, he plays second guitar in this other band or he does vocals for this, you know, uh, this band that's like kind of post hardcore, or, you know, like it's a, a very communal kind of like everyone's a part of every band. And that's how we were here. Like, uh, when I was growing up, I played drums for a hardcore band, and in between our set, we had a power violence band that I did vocals for that would come would on you to like power violin power, or violence. Power violence. It's that's, a, now that's a song genre. That, no, music it's genre? a subgenre of hardcore. Yes, it's power a, violence, dude. You're gonna thank me after. Uh, this is a know. oh, it's it's one word. Okay, fast, hardcore, pong, thrash, core, there grindcore. You go, siege, drop dead, infest, uh, spaz. Spaz is a really, really good power violence band. They're from California. Uh, <laughs> they're sick, dude. Crossed out. Yeah, man is the bastard. Capitalist cash. You know, there's so, there's something though that's like really ironic though about these groups that, um, like their sound. It's like you know 
they're breaking out and they're man. trying to break all the rules and break out of the mold. And it's like, oh, you're one of those mold breaking genres. I know exactly where you fit. You fit in the power violence subgenre of hardcore, which is a subgenre of rock, which is a sub, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh no, you're super yeah. special. Let's put you in this the little uh, basket that yeah. we've already got pre labeled for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude. But uh, I don't know. I really. To be honest with you, I got into subgenres just because my iTunes uh, was very broad and uh, I kind of have OCD, so I had to organize everything real good. So I had, I don't know, I kind of can't explain it. I guess uh, if what's, you what's can relate. Your next you can relate. Album? What's up? What's what's next up on your albums? Um, Let's see. Let's do... Uh, Uh, we could talk about Orange Goblin if you want to. Orange Goblin. This was a yeah. new one for me that I, I hadn't heard of before. It's like biker metal. Uh, it's it's pretty damn good though. I mean, they have some songs that that go for pretty long. Uh, not nearly as long as Sleep, who we'll probably talk about last because they're my favorite. But uh, yeah, uh, time time traveling blues is probably my favorite. It, what I found with lyrics and uh, 1998, I think, or and this is 99. some sweet like uh, early 2000s PowerPoint artwork Hell yeah, dude. The album cover. I like that. I love it too. Yeah, I love the aesthetic of that. Uh, but the the music is very good, dude. Like you know, you you hear stoner metal or whatever, and you think it would just be. I mean, in some cases, it is. But that, like, you know, that's what we said when you get into sludge metal and stuff. It is more just like, you know, people debasing themselves on stage and, you know, in a drug fueled rage or stupor or just like, is but, you know, Allen, like, is he involved in all this? Is that sludge? No, dude, G, G, G Allen is strictly punk rock. Okay. Strictly punk rock. Yeah. It's, 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 does he I even mean, have his own genre? I feel like he, he earned his I own genre. No. Maybe one day. <laughs> One day, I, I think I've how think many the, more GG Allens so we could have to exist. <laughs> I, but one was enough, dude. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, bro. There was one CD called Rock and Roll Terrorists. There's a few songs on there that I would that I loved listening to growing up. Uh, and well, I, I hope I hung out for your sins one day. I had a bunch of friends that were crust punks, dude. And I had a bunch of friends that were hardcore kids and a bunch of friends that were indie kids and listened to Modest Mouse. And so like, like we all, you know, listen to all types of music, you know? So, but. So, so actually just learned what a crust punk was recently. And just tell me if this really? is correct, but a crust punk are the ones that like put all the hair gel in and do like the huge spikes. No, those are street punks. Crust right, punks. I'm lost are the mm -hmm. ones that train hop with dogs. Like you'll see them like they're real dirty. They don't wear shoes. Uh, they usually I hope I don't see like them. If I feel very, like I, I, I uh, see a lot of crust punks, I'm doing something. They wrong. have dreads or, you know, they're like, but they're like train hopping across country. I mean, they're, they're pretty nice people. Actually. I've, I've honestly never met like a violent crust punk. Uh, I mean, e every city's different. Um, but, yeah, crust punk so is. So how does the, how does like hippie being punk? Like a, I don't like know a, how to like explain. Train it. hopping hobo punk translate into a musical genre. Uh, go listen to nausea. Nausea. So this is this is all new to me. I'm nausea. Heard. Yeah, man, they're uh, one of the first crust bands from New York. Uh, their singer Amy Murray was the wife of Roger Murray, the singer from Agnostic Front. Okay, I've heard them because they, they yeah, kind of yeah, got yeah. a little mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, but, you know, she had dreads and everything. Like, she's super crust punk. And, uh, but not, they are very, they, they were considered New York hardcore, but to, to a lot of people, to, I guess, to crust punk, you know, they, they were considered that. Um, I was never, I mean, I don't know, dude. I was never really a crust punk. Uh, maybe at one point when I was like younger. Well, wouldn't when you was, have like, to be like riding on trains you know? if you're actually a crust punk? Yeah. I mean, or I mean, you know, if you're playing the music, I don't know. 
You that know? seems like an easier way. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's yeah. like, like the you're grandfathered route. in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep my shoes on. Let me just play the guitar. Yeah, dude. But uh, so or Orange Goblin, Time Traveling Blues, another British, uh, another British group. We got oh, they're oh okay, so they're they're British. All right, I didn't know that. Up? Do they just did they lose points for being? No, 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 no. I mean, maybe, sounded like it a little bit. Maybe you know, a little bit. Disappointed. Maybe a little bit because I can't relate them to like you know the Hell's Angels riding out to them now. <laughs> it's like some dudes playing polo listening to them or some shit. I don't know. I don't so know. and I don't, I don't know if these were even on Genius. I actually well, figured out that most of the the Stone I'm just Rock. Kidding, by the way, there's for. nothing wrong with them being English. Um, there we go. there's another band that we're going to talk about that's also from England. Uh a very uh, obscure band that no one really knows about, but, but this band, dude, their, their lyrics, uh, definitely, um, match the title of the album. Time. What do you time think traveling blues blues. is? I'm assuming that it's some sort of an illicit substance. I, I, I maybe was thinking it was something out al- alchemical. Um, but I'm thinking usually it's more you don't like see a, blue someone made in their garage. associated with alchemy. Uh, you know, it's usually like black or red or gold or you know, um, red sunshine. Blue snow. Snow. No, I, I thought it may have been like a drug slang. Uh, you know, blue okay, snow. I'm gonna, ask GPT. I'm gonna say that I found some blue snow. I found my kid talking about blue snow and i'm afraid it's drugs maybe it's just cocaine with fentanyl in it the easy way to die uh this album is like 1997 so this is pre-fentanyl it seems like it would have been oh yeah okay well uh let's see let's see what chad gbt says about this finding a reference to blue snow in a note from 1997 (laughs) okay literal blue snow sometimes snow can appear um blue due to the way light scatters so maybe they're just talking about the refraction of light in very specific circumstances maybe this is actually like yeah. a scientific breakdown of how the like the physics of light um or it might be a reference to something in pop culture thank you chat gpt really on the nose thank you chat gpt yeah so so absolutely nothing but it does say that we should try and gently ask more about the note so Maybe we can reach out to mm. Orange Goblin and gently ask them what Blue Snow is really about. I might do that. I can do that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, maybe do that, man. Let's let's reach out to them. Maybe have them and, on the podcast. But make sure that you gently ask. Gen- okay. I'll very gently ask. Solar Sphere. This is like banging in the astral plane, I'm, I'm assuming. A lot of these songs are about just like astral traveling oh yeah the astral master has gone insane yeah we'll a travel time in our spaceship stone. made a stone far from home for i believe inside the sun there's purple sky where the dragon rides you can't find me inside my brain astral master, gone insane. this yeah, one's a lot more sick, wordy dude. lots more words than the, any of the previous ones for sure yeah um a great song on there is uh the man who invented time and uh let's look uh, at that one first the man yeah, who invented yeah. time when i open my arms i touch and on so when i close my eyes i see tomorrow this sounds like it could almost be like a Celine Dion song <laughs> maybe not the hook yeah, maybe not the bro hook. i am the time creating man <laughs> would this be chronos or saturn Maybe Uranus. In my time, nice one. Night, time traveling caravan. Synthetic miracle in hand. Time creating man. I mean, this synthetic miracle in hand almost sounds like someone that figured out how to manage time, which I guess how to time travel. Man. Yeah. Look, look, is, look at the next Kronos, one. Right? Um, huh? I'm it sorry. It seems like it would have to be Kronos. Oh, yeah. Saturn. What, yeah. What's planet 10? I don't know. I counted it. It's it would be Pluto, maybe. Planet 10 is a hypothetical body in the solar system said to be on the eighth planet Neptune and the demoted Pluto. 
theorized okay. to be around the mass the size of Mars or Earth at the edge of the Kuiper belt. Like Planet Nine, we haven't confirmed the existence, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's like a, a possible... Here's another one from space.com, which I'm sure we can trust. I'm sure they're NASA-funded, so... Oh, yeah. Planet 10, another Earth-sized world may lurk in the outer solar system. All right, all right. This is, we're, le- we're learning things. This is a science show now. We are, man. Yeah, uh, Planet 10 happening. is where I cast my spell, uh, and I think that this is almost like the zip code rule like it's not cheating if it's in a different zip code so if you if you do black magic on planet 10 i don't think you go to hell like you're outside the confines of like normal bible law and if there's still a million billion light years in the sky which sounds like it's not not the right way to say that number we will see but only time will tell million billion yeah i don't know i don't think so either no do you think time travel is real yes do you think someone has already time traveled? Yeah. Or do you think you think it's just possible in theory? I mean, dude, yeah. You know, there's theories that everything is happening all at the same time, all at once, every second. You know. Um, so I think if if the future exists in another, you know, timeline or whatever, and yeah, I I think somebody could definitely definitely time travel, dude. Yeah, they they have a CD called Frequencies from Planet 10. Well, it's interesting because we were on the album for Time Traveling Blues, and Time Traveling Blues has a song called Nuclear Guru. It's on both albums, I think. Yeah. 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 That's cheating. That is cheating. Are you allowed to do that? I think you're allowed to do that. That's, That's against the rules of nuclear stoner sludge rock, I think. Yes. Father, who, who, who created those rules though thomas i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. so uh, this is a new word for me shang shangama what is that shangama i looked it up dude i'm ah. sang sangoma sangoma is a uh african witch doctor that's what credo mutwa was was a sangoma so i don't know if you know you take the h out See. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. So, so again, this doesn't necessarily mean that everyone knows how to spell properly, but I, it sounds like this is probably what they're talking about. Stangoma is a shaman from South African culture, so like the Zulu, Kreda Mutwa, Zulu's version of a shaman. Yeah, dude. I, I have a book that I'm reading by him right now that talks about like the initiatory rites of becoming a Sangoma dude, and it's, uh, it's intense bro we'll have to talk about it sometime all right we're i'm, I'm losing my my path here you're good we already went there we went schmitzar we learned about ox we learned about worms we talked about orange goblin uh time travel so orange, now okay, it's here you go. yeah orange and is, was that the last big one on this album was, um uh, there's nuclear guru and then there's a song called lunarville seven airlock three uh i found that interesting uh, Lunarville 7, down at airlock 3, a magician called Infinity, uh, an astral wizard, master in a cosmic home. Okay, I'm a, I can already... The dragon almost, Lord like, of The <laughs> Dragon Lord of Jupiter and Space Block 1, the Crimson Void Inerta and the Seventh Sun, rider of the Star Child Unicorn. He saves children of eternity in astral graves. You may be going to hell if you listen to this. I don't know. I mean, this one doesn't sound as bad. Meteoric butterflies and poison clouds and nitrate skies. This dude, this is a great song, dude. I'm just going to say this might be a recipe for cooking up something illicit. Yeah, it it sort of reads that way. I'm not we're not going to decode that uh, bit for bit here uh, on a live stream, but there might be something to this. Like They might be just telling you how to make like 2CB or something. And this is my first time to really read these lyrics, dude. So this is never been this high. You've never been this high. You've never <laughs> been this high. You've never been this high. Okay. Yeah. They've look, never been this crystal high. Man. And a sonic C. I feel like they're maybe they're making meth here. Maybe this is the original Walter White recipe. It is biker metal. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I really like if you think about it, right? The ultimate biker Bible, it would have like like a regular Bible. It would have like hymns and psalms, Not but it sure. would be encoded with the recipe to make meth. Like that's what a biker Bible would probably have in there. 
And it would be smart. It would be smart because then if you remember the song, you remember the recipe. You don't have to write it down. No. Free tips. Free tips from Paranoid American to all the Hell's Angels out there. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll I'll, uh, pick up my next one. This is another uh, album that doesn't have any sort of lyrics on Genius.com. It was just one that I found just kind of like searching around. It's called The Shelter The Shelter People. I so love their logo, man. Play. Yeah, well, I I was wondering if you ever heard of them before. I have not, but their little uh, little logo Tulsa, thing, Oklahoma. I, I love that. I dig that uh, 70s acid and it, rock. And it, Aesthetic. Totally has that sound to it. And in yeah. fact, they even mention over here that the, the name Shelter People comes from Leon Russell because Leon Russell, his band was Leon Russell and the Shelter People. I don't think that okay. these I don't think that these are the Shelter People from the Leon Russell and the Shelter People, because these dudes are still fairly young in this picture from like 2016, 2017. But right. they get the name from that. So I so they kind of like model their music after that Leon Russell sound, which uh, is, I guess like Leon Russell was so varied that you could technically say stoner rock, but he also worked with like Phil Spector and the Beatles. And um, I think like he had covers that he did with uh, famous blues singers. I think Ray Charles did like a cover of Leon Russell and stuff like multiple. Really? Brandies. So yeah, like, I've got here. So okay. um, here's the sheltered people. They're on SoundCloud too. If you want to go and listen to them on SoundCloud. Uh, give them give them a little follow they're on spotify they got some tracks on there and uh leon russell and the shelter people this was the original so 1971 but leon russell himself that's this badass dude with the uh with like the the killer glasses with the jim jones glasses and the wild hair and this like sick ass hat right but look at the genres that he's attributed to Rock, country, gospel, bluegrass, R and B, southern rock, blues rock, folk, surf, and something called the Tulsa sound, which I hadn't actually heard of until just now. Yeah, me either. Have you heard? You never. Isn't this sort of like in your your neck of the woods? What Tulsa, Oklahoma? I mean, you know, just you uh, know, well, oh, mid- the Midwest the music. I was like, wait a minute. Um, I mean, rockabilly. So, but I mean, Leon Russell is one of the the most varied dudes that maybe a lot of people don't hear about him now. He died in Nashville. Uh, I, I was born this. in Nashville. One of his early yeah. fans, Elton John, said Russell was a mentor and inspiration. So this is like when, whenever you hear someone say your favorite musician's favorite musician, and I don't know if yeah. Elton John is your favorite. He's definitely my favorite. Oh, um, well, but Elton John's favorite musician favorite. was Leon Russell. So. Really? Okay. Was Leon Russell gay? I mean, if you if you're doing that many drugs and it's the '60s and you're in all these genres, I mean, yeah. <laughs> let's just say, yeah, just to simplify the argument, like as gay as he could be in the '60s on every drug known to man. Right. So sh- shelter people again. Like, uh, I don't have any of the lyrics to pull up for them, but this is what I would kind of consider in my definition of stoner rock, meaning that it would have fit right in in the seventies. Um, and but it's like now, or, or at least it was in 2016, 2017. Right. So th- it fits directly into. And this one, I actually the way that some of the stoner rock lyrics, the way they sing it, they almost turn the lyrics into another instrument where like you don't have to listen to what they're saying. Like it turn, it's, uh, it's hard to that's describe, cool, but you can oh, just that's, turn that's it cool. into like a, like a guitar lead and just listen to it as if it were an instrument and not even have to care about what the words mean. I'm, I'm going to go check all, all this out. You know, that, that's also how you get yourself sent to hell though, is you're just like putting on like evil invocations and you're just like, Oh, it sounds cool. That's cool. Yeah, dude. So all right, what, what do you got up next? Let's see. Um, let's do uh, Sloth, the voice of God. And Sloth, Sloth is from the UK. Um, very hard to find this CD, like anywhere for download, dude. I have it on actual CD. I have like a. So when I was younger, dude, I had, you know, uh, U Torrent or whatever, you know. Uh, back when that was popular. Um, Get yourself in trouble here, man. 
Oh, I didn't know. Public. Why? See, you got to tell me these things, dude. Uh, <laughs> rhymes with abhorrent. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, you know, and so I have like a whole catalog of, uh, I'm not big enough to get in trouble, dude. I have like 22 followers on YouTube, bro. Yeah, but what happens is that you get big and then they look like seven years back and then they're like, right. oh, he admitted to U-Torrent, set him his ass to jail. And then you're just like writing letters through the the plumbing system before you know it. I'm hoping to have my own like, I don't know. Uh, so so did you, Lyman's when movie. did you find Sloth Voice of God? Because it came out in 2000 and you said you were like a 12, 13 year old freshman in 2006. So this, you would have been what, like six or seven years old when this one came out? Probably seven. Yeah, I was in the second grade in 2000. Uh and you were chanting Lord of the Gallows. Dude, that's crazy. You just highlighted that song because that's like, yeah, that's that's my my favorite song. Um Doom Metal. Oh no, that's gonna show us get music. real <laughs> high before you listen to this CD. Like, In Minecraft. Super In stuff. Minecraft, everyone. Yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah. What Thomas said. They're uh, I see they're also not on genius.com. Maybe someone needs to go through genius.com. Go to just go to Google and type in um sloth, the voice of God lyrics. Oh and, yeah, no, I mean I I found the uh here's all the, the search results, but I I just haven't found anywhere that has the lyrics broken down line by line like Genius does. Ah. Oh, here we go. Oh, Show man. lyrics. Lord of the Gallows. There we go. There we go. Zero animation, burn holes through the sky, lifespan so volatile, seen through loveless eyes. Okay. I want to, like, where, where's the, the, the meth instructions? Well, that, this song is more of a listen to for me. It's not really about the lyrics. I wish we could listen to it. That'd be rad, dude. It's so sick, dude. It's, well, it's, it's linked down below in the playlist. It'll, it'll pull yeah, it up. Yeah. It's, listen to it in full. it's, it's so good, man. Uh, but um, the CD it's itself, like all the rest of the songs, um, there's some pretty in interesting stuff in. But this this is just my favorite song because of uh, how the song is built, like the structure of the song, and it's also pretty long. Uh, I don't know how long. Maybe. Or if this is talking about baptism, because it's saying here about like I let the water wash over them, the sky turn black. Uh, that could be the blackening process. And then here it's talking about animal prepares for the revolution, body like animal sacrifice or something. Yeah, this is all. Yeah, this is basically for watching the world from on top of a frozen sun. Gallo man turn in the wake of animation. what do you i mean and then they were all about like broken yeah that shit goes hard dude up. like broken angel wings to me that implies fallen angels like i don't think of a course angel would ever have its wings broken right so well, this look, is deep in hell god's lonely angel sins so i think you're you're spot on with that one bro why can't they just sing something about jesus something nice about breaking bread Cooking fish <laughs> into the sun. Heaven's golden soul. Don't shine on me no more. So negative. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Uh, Men handing over money. Got blood on their hands. You'll say your soul. Don't shine on me no more. Um, is there a, like a, a communist doom sub genre where it's like, <laughs> they just specifically talk about the evils of currency. So. Uh, there may be, especially now, dude, you got a, you got a lot of, you know, I, I don't really, like that would be a better music, reality if but, there was sub genres based on like political ideologies, like, like the anti federal reserve sub genre of doom rock, instead of a sub genre based around punks that have dirty feet and ride trains for free. Like it would be cooler if there was like the anti federal reserve sub genre alongside crust punk. I would listen to that all the time, dude. Maybe they go hand in hand. I don't know. They may, because I don't know, man. Like, I kind of talk about it a bunch. You know, the people growing up, not everyone, but some people 
or you know they grew up being against the establishment or you know do it yourself mentality uh and now they're just you know another yeah cog in the machine just another uh bootlicker you know well, another I, mean, sheep I remember growing to up add in, to the cattle or whatever it's, one it's of the sad. things that, that grew out of like that hard rock concerts and the church and stuff is that i've had a lot of friends that ended up getting like sucked all the way into some of the extremes in there like there was a like a straight edge gang and yeah they, they would they literally, straight edge they would go out on the weekends um and this is in in south florida so they would go to like the pier along the beach and they would just look for people that were holding like a drink in their hand or smoking a cigarette and Dude. if you were lucky, they would slap it out of your hand or slap it out of your face. But a lot of the time, if they felt like they could pick a fight with you, then if you were smoking a cigarette, they would like slap you in the face to get it Wait out. It's almost so, like a challenge. Do you remember the band X Bishop X? I don't. Bishop X? X Bishop X. They were a straight edge band from South Florida. And they were it, the singer's name was Mean Pete. And he was in a band called Until the End. And uh, they actually slept on my floor one night at my mom's this is house. A, so until the end is sounding familiar, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would have been right in the heyday, man. Ninety five. Yeah, dude. They yeah. slept. They slept on my floor at my mom's house. <laughs> uh, in the night when I was in the ninth grade, we played a show with them. This band called the Red Baron from South Florida, and this band from Texas of these all oh, these yeah, Mexican dudes called Thick as Blood. There you go. See, and they all stayed. And my and my buddies from Tupelo. Uh, choices made they they played the show um it, it was a fucking great show dude uh but they half you of the know, band stayed at my house the other half so stayed at my friend's house huh? bill porto and chase babcock i feel yeah, like that's those uh, names are so damn familiar yeah man i mean like you said you know that well, i mean i was been, i was a little skater punk around that exact same time and like i said like my like a lot of my friends got wrapped up into this exact movement and were chilling with these dudes uh in right. the late 90s um, it, that was not my my bag, man. Like I went the opposite direction. I, feel you. Know what I mean, yeah, man. I mean, my the I was in two two hardcore bands when I was in, I guess three when I was in high school. Um, throughout the ninth to the twelfth grade, we're we're gonna have to have a separate show on like Christian for sure, dude. Yeah, bands. for sure. Um, Especially if we can do like a Florida only one, because I feel like like I would know of some of the people personally. Dude, there were a ton of straight edge bands from Florida. And I, I agree that straight Kids edge like is us, Casey door. Jones. Uh <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I have I agree. one lifelong friend who's straight edge, but he comes over for Fourth of July when we all get drunk and and everything and chills and cooks. Like he he he's awesome. Dude, uh, I, and I want to be specific too. It's not. It's not that being straight edge makes you a bad person. It's like the uh, the militant straight edgers that exactly like for. It's like the militant vegans that'll stop you. People that worship the or worship people that listen uh, to the band Judge and then go out and like slap a cigarette out of your hand. Is you that know? was that from a song? Is it like telling people to do that? Oh, dude, uh, there were some straight edge bands back in the nineties that were like super militant like vegan like very uh you know go this way or we're gonna beat the fuck out of you you know uh especially up north in boston and stuff yeah dude i gotta say there so, is a the little whole bit of like boston christian beat down thing to that man that's kind of like a christian like hardcore thing like oh yeah, you're it's gonna like a brotherly gonna, like you're gonna ass whooping yeah man <laughs> there should be like a hard there should be like a straight edge hardcore band of all ladies and they just dress up as nuns and they have yardsticks and they there go out in public one dude there and has they just to be hit one you with yardsticks if they see you doing something wrong that would there be pretty be badass one now. that would be an awesome gimmick that's another free one man we're giving out free gimmicks on this show all day long just join the patreon you'll get better ones dude the um, last show that we had here the the headlining band the singer came out carried in a coffin and they asked me to put on a robe and carry him out. I, and I said, no. I was like, I'm not going to be a part of this ritual, whatever y'all are doing. <laughs> like, no, dude. And that's what James Brown did, too. He had people throw a little It was rope sick, though. I, I I have it on video. I, I could post it on, on my ex later. I, I forgot <laughs> the band's name, dude. They were fucking awesome. But uh, 
Well, th- like, this yeah, one caught my eye. I'm not familiar with Sloth or Voice of God, and they have this one called Green Magic. And it's I mean, a good obviously, song. Green Magic is talking about paganism and like yeah, you know, the Green Christian Man. Magic. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this. I think, especially them being from the UK, you know, you have the whole ancient, you know, Druidic world over there. You know, uh, so there's definitely a lot of influence of that. Um. I mean, the last song on the CD is called Casting the Circle. You know? Yeah, they, uh, very yeah. Tony Blair of them. <laughs> ah, yeah, the devil sign can set me free. No holiness inside of me. Out, this is the song that you put on like after you get home and your mom's like, yeah, you're not sure. going out to play until your room's clean. You're like, screw that, mom. Fuck you. <laughs> no Leave devil sign can set me free. <laughs> I wonder the two yeah, like uh way. how how many people like certain genres cater to this more than others, but some genres it feels like they uh, they appeal mostly to the age group that the band members are in themselves and lower and never like higher like in in, in a similar and obviously this isn't like a broad rule that applies to everyone. There's always you know exceptions and things that break the mold. But for example. Um, like Scream Core comes out and I don't know, early 2000s and everyone's got like the weird something about Mary haircuts where like oh, it's Jesus just like shooting Christ, in all directions. Dude. But Screamo. that felt like it applied to that age group and down. And it never that wasn't necessarily going for like 40 and 50 and 60 year olds. But there is some music that just applies to all sort of age groups. Dude. Another one that I bring up to is like Juggalo music. Shout out Donut. But like Donut. Even Juggalos come out. Happy birthday, and- Donut. As uh, yeah, happy birthday! It's as judgmental birthday, as yeah. this sounds, I I swear I I just I talk unfiltered. It's not a judgmental thing. It's just like the unbridled version of what I'm thinking. But when a right. like, juggalo, I always wonder if like Great Malenko comes out and you see like a 40 year old dude like rush to get it. I'm like, there's something wrong with that dude. And it doesn't mean that the like you're not allowed to like ICP and you're not allowed to like juggalos right. as a 40 or 50 year old. But I'm just saying that, like, from an outside, completely neutral, and I'd imagine objective observer, if you're like waiting in line for the second door to open and you're like, no, I don't have kids. No, I don't care about pop culture. I'm just really into murderous clown rap. Um, I, like, you, maybe that you should be on a list. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. I never had any friends who were really juggalos, man. Um, well, Donut, Donut is as is, is juggalo as you can get, man. Oh yeah, no! Shout out Donut Man. He's he's awesome. Happy birthday, I love Donut. Donut! My hardcore band. Okay. Fuck yeah, dude! That's that's what made y'all a hardcore band. Yeah. Did you did anyone? Because I remember in one of the hardcore bands, we got banned from church, multiple dude. venues. One of them did the uh, like the WWF um, move where someone took like a little razor and they cut like the very top of their head so they would start bleeding so, like right before this like huge. You know song what we did? Were, like, grabbing the mic and letting it drool down their face. You know it what we sick, did? Bro. I'm not we gonna lie. We wouldn't do that. Was- we would actually like hit the mic into yeah. our foreheads <laughs> and bust it open. My I had a friend that did vocals for uh, this band called Hanging Heads. He's uh, actually in prison for trafficking fentanyl now. So, but, um, and then like, like two days later, beautiful. they're like using it to sing like hymns in church. And like, why does this microphone smell like blood? <laughs> right. Or like at the, uh, at the community center or something. And there's like children <laughs> up there. Like, what's that stain? Like, Oh, <laughs> like, there were a bunch of just like, you know, ravenous punks in here last night, like stage diving and busting their own heads open. <laughs> Does this still exist? I'm so out of touch. Like, are, Dude, are there today and not here before? anymore? Whenever, like, my age group kind of all got out of high school and went off to college here. I mean, dude, I live in Mississippi, bro. We're the poorest state in the country. Uh, you know, we get everything five years after. Um, you know, it it is what it is. And I've accepted that growing up here. Um, it's basically Tulsa, Oklahoma. Like I said before, (laughs) dude, Nate told me that I lived in Oklahoma like three times. And I was like, Nate, it's not Oklahoma. It's Mississippi. (laughs) 
It's dude, it's the same thing. Come on. I know. I, I basically was like, you can call it Oklahoma. It's fine. Like, stop being so condescending. Great build from Tulsa, Oklahoma, guys. Followers shall walk. Okay. So, I mean, this one honestly doesn't seem like it's sending me to hell uh, right off the bat. So, Not right off the bat. No. I love the cover. The cover seems very unassuming. It looks like a cure. Super album. Microsoft, like. Yeah, man. 90 something. So, yeah, like dude. someone pirated Photoshop version <laughs> two and made this album cover. I love it. I, I couldn't tell if it was like a sigil at first. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, dude. this this is um. I mean, it kind of looks like an onk, but I feel like it might be a rune. I honestly, I don't know enough about runes. Uh, maybe it's not a rune. So yeah, sloth. And then it almost has like the ghost, the ghost look with like the little upside down or Saint, let's say St. Peter's cross, not upside down cross, St. Peter. And there's some sort of like a ritual going on here too. It looks like someone's on like a table and there's candles up here. Yeah, dude, for sure. All right, I'll go, or we did shelter people. This one feels a little bit timely. So this is another group that is not on genius.com. I don't know if it's because they're not well known. I did go on YouTube and I found, um, yeah, I clicked on here, like for here, let me see if I can be fast enough to not let it play. Huh, okay. Uh, and one of the com, okay, well the comments not on this one, but there was one of these videos and the comment was like, let's be honest. YouTube didn't suggest this to you. You like you, sorry, my dog's barking, the- dude. Some, somebody just got to my house. Um, are you are you loading your your gat right now? Is that what's happening under the table? Uh, maybe, dude. No, no, I'm trying to see who's at my front door, and I'm I'm it um it's it's actually I don't know who that is. I mean, you who strap. That? You need help. Are you getting swatted right now? Give me a second, Thomas. I'm about to tell whoever it is to leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> oh God. If we if we hear any ruckus, we're just gonna assume that that Great Build is handling business. But yeah, this this is an album called The Machine Solar Corona, and uh, it has songs on it, Moons of Neptune, and you know, self titled Solar Corona. And one of the the cool aspects I think is that this Moons of Neptune song, again, this is gonna be a learning show today, but that the planet Neptune has sixteen moons. Name for minor water you have deities. To be kidding me, Thomas. Some what? guy wondering if I wanted my fucking yard cut. No, I don't want my yard Did you shoot cut. Him? I cut my own yard. Did you shoot Sorry. him or what? I told him to fuck off, man. I, uh, I, if I if this were Florida, shit, you could have just said Castle Doctrine and you can shoot him. This That's isn't. Long. I could have shot him, but he he was he was nice about it. I'll my son will cut my yard tomorrow. <laughs> I got it. Sorry, man. That, well, so we're we're doing um this it's an album called Solar Corona by the Machine, and one of the songs on here was called The Moons of Neptune, and this just led me down a whole research angle of because I, I wasn't big into space. Uh, I still am not even sure if the moon exists. It may so, be fake and gay. Yeah, it might it might all be fake, but this is a really cool uh, aspect where like this is a memory palace in a way. I don't know if it was this. No, there's another album that I've got pointed out that has a song called Mind Palace. Uh, but this to me is a good representation of what like a memory palace and how memory palace works. I don't know. If, have you ever gone down the memory palace road before? I've heard about it, dude, but I have not. But I love this. Oh, here, let me I can give you this is the one that I gave Juan that, that I think sent him down the path. So yeah, bro. a memory palace in the most simple way is that you construct an actual palace in your mind and you put memories in it, hence the name Memory Palace. But one of the examples of this would be, if you wanted here, we'll, we'll take um, like one of the songs, I guess, or here, like the track list. Let's say you wanted to remember um, all seven of the song titles that are on this album, and I'll zoom in so you can read them. It's not going to matter. But Solar Corona, X, Caterpillar's Mushroom, Interstellar Medium, Jam No Fi, infinite and moons of neptune so the way a memory palace would work is imagine the house that you grew up in like or whatever house that you can remember the most vividly from like your childhood right 
Yeah. And imagine now that if you were walking in, you go to grab the front door, but instead of being a door there, it's a huge solar Corona, like a big portal going into your house and it's a solar Corona. So, so imagine yourself okay. stepping through this solar Corona that is now your front door and then you're inside your house. And I don't know, did you have like a foyer there or did you Dude. have like a living room or a kitchen or? So my mom's house growing up, I actually had my own back porch and my own back door. Okay. So, so imagine that, that your back door is this solar Corona. So you walk through the solar Corona, which is your back door. And what's the first thing that you see normally in, the, in this house? If you go through the back door, uh, my drums right there. To okay. The so, so imagine that you walk through the solar Corona and you look down on the ground and the whole ground just has a huge X carved into it. And let's say that the X is um, basically created out of two huge caterpillars. So you've got two big caterpillars that are forming an X on the ground. You got to step over them in order to get to your drums, right? And then yeah. once you sit on to your drums, um, like the drums, uh, you're sitting inside of space or maybe like you're inside of the movie Interstellar. Maybe you see that scene where Matthew McConaughey is like floating inside that weird black room, but he's playing yeah. the drums, right? So now if you if you rewind it, I won't go through this entire thing because it'll take a little while, but okay. now if you imagine it, you're walking into your house. What's the first thing you see? A solar Corona. Okay, walk through the solar Corona. Now what do you see? You see an X on the ground. The X is made out of caterpillars. And then it, as you make your way to the drums, you see Matthew McConaughey playing the drums in an astronaut suit. Well, now you just remembered the first four uh, song titles in order solar corona x caterpillar mushroom interstellar oh. and you can now do this in reverse order in any orders you can be like okay let's assume that you're chilling with matthew mcconaughey playing Dude, that drums. happens to me with so much well th and this is what um, a mind palace or a memory palace is it's being and, okay and the whole reason that i brought this up is because I'm glad you did man well, this concept of the, the planet Neptune has 16 known moons, and then it says, which are named for minor water deities and a water creature. Um, oh, this wow. is a memory palace, bro. Like this is, this is astrology, and all the constellations are just a huge memory palace in the sky. So if you wanted to know what the 16 um, moons of Neptune were, you could not only know what they all were based on remembering like a mythology, but now you also know mythology uh, in, in addition to knowing what the moons of Neptune are. So it's like this, this dual purpose mind palace. And again, if you don't have an Xbox to pop on or like YouTube to pop on at the end of the day, cause you're in freaking ancient Greece, you do have this huge, uh, you know, sky full of stars and constellations that are always there. So this was a real easy way to memorize all this crazy stuff. Right. Which was really important for a large number of people that couldn't read or write, but they knew oral traditions and oral histories. Which was a lot of people during that ancient time, right? I mean, uh, prior to the Gutenberg, there was almost nobody that nobody. had a reason to be able to read or write. There was, but the, but the priest, right? Right. Yeah. So anyway, so so that's a cool little introduction to what. Can you maybe, hear that lawnmower in the background? No, you're good. Okay, I'm just making sure. You have to go and I, shoot someone. I sure as shit can hear it, man. I don't know. He may just, maybe he's like a Mormon and he's going around asking people if they can have their yards I mowed. Trust him. Well, my son didn't answer the door. That's why I had to go in there because my son. I was like, "Good job," but next time, tell him through the window to go away. All right. What's What's your next album? Um, okay, next we're going to talk about um, Electric Wizard, Dope Throne. Uh, this album holds a special place in my heart. Uh, Another British band. What are you doing here, man? Don't you have any good, um, good old American stoner metal? I mean, dude, I do. I don't know, man. I, I, I just, I didn't even, the, the funny thing is, I didn't even realize most of these bands were British. You, they, you might just have an affinity towards British people. I think just, you're outing they yourself. They sound here. like American <laughs> stoner metal. I don't know. It, it, uh, you know, most of the sludge metal bands are from America. So, I mean, it makes sense though, about because us. if, if, uh, Black Sabbath is one of the OGs and Black Sabbath is British rock, exactly. So it's kind of in the DNA, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were some other bands from England that were of that similar sound as well. 
Um, but yeah, Sounds man, pretty hardcore. Tim Bagshaw, the group's bassist, said he was arrested for breaking into a liquor store. Drummer Mark Greening fell off his motorcycle and broke a collarbone. Collarbone, and um, Auburn was arrested for setting fire to the Reliant Robin, which is this ridiculous looking <laughs> uh, clown car that British people still ride around in today. This is this is actually the pinnacle of no British. shit automotive engineering is this little clown car thing that's fantastic <laughs> this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen <laughs> dude i would i mean if i had money to blow really you, know, one of these? you wouldn't get one of those like uh um what are they called modern trikes i don't know man that you know that what i'm talking just, about yeah these do come on if you're gonna everyone has those though dude who who has one of those kenny, other at least do the kenny powers route and get yourself like a trike don't get one of these stupid i mean of course cars. i'd buy one of those too but you know i just that's have those. starting at nine grand that's not bad there's, at all there's, that's, that's cheap that's cheaper than a side by side i've seen people spend more to look sillier i'll say that for sure dude so okay so <laughs> so this is uh I don't know how we even got down the the path to the trike. Okay, uh, no, it was no. it was because you brought up um the wizard uh what was it dope throne electric wizard dope throne dope throne okay. yeah which came out in uh two thousand. So these guys are going crazier. They're setting fire to clown cars in the middle of the street, uh, well, but they're also one of them's a uh, female. Oh, what is it? The bass player is uh, she's a chick, either the bass or guitar player. She's she's a uh, rise above chick, records. Dude. Okay, and this is uh, fairly new too, right? This is two thousand. Yeah, yeah. They have some stuff that's a little older than this. Some uh, sh- well, you Super know, shorter Coven albums. Their first one, Su- Super Coven. Uh, they're self-titled. Um, Wizards of Gore. I kind of I like the naming. They have a split with Orange Goblin called Chrononaut. And I love that. I love that name. Right yeah, there here. you go. Right there. That's the Orange Goblin. Uh, see? New, new, Chrononaut. Nuclear Guru. Uh, so that's, there's that Orange Goblin song again, bro. So they got a, a 1997 vinyl. I'm just curious uh, how much this was going for in Discogs. And I don't know if, if anyone here collects vinyl me um, but usually yeah usually discogs is where i go to just see how much it's going for like i wouldn't actually get yeah. it from here most of the time yeah uh, every once in a while okay that's not so bad last sold bad. uh february for how much though all right i'm not playing this game but yeah okay 60 <laughs> 10 to 60 bucks honestly a brand new vinyl album is probably going to be around 20 plus at this point anyways even for like a mainstream non-colorway yeah yeah, dude, that's that's a great little uh, split that they did. I love that one. The song. And I do. Are... I got it. Like, so there's a lot of debate over with whether vinyl records sound as good as whatever high def HD rips. I think it's kind of a moot point because it's like a different experience for it. And out of all the types of musical genres, stoner rock works the best on vinyl. Like, it just it fits hand in hand with kind of like the 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 quality of the audio but also forcing you to listen to it start to end like you're not going to get up and keep oh, yeah. changing the track one to one to one but a lot of these stoner albums they actually do have a really nice building theme like they've got a thematic story that they tell that doesn't maybe exist and if you just went and got like the latest taylor swift album shots fired yeah dude for sure. And that's something that I was going to bring up is they do tell a story and we will see that uh, when we look at the sleep album after this. Um, yeah, man. And it kind of comes full full circle and in, in, in each album at the by, by the end of the album, it's like usually sometimes it's back to like the riff in the first song or, you know, uh, back to that, you know, kind of pace of how the album started. Um but but yeah man this cd uh there's a song called weird tales um electric frost golgotha and altar of melect house 
and Melechthaus is that peacock angel or peacock king uh, that I was talking about earlier that uh, the Yazidi tribe worshipped as Tawusi Melech. Uh, and if you look at the sigil of this god, it is the same sigil that represents uh, the Sumerian deity Ea or Inki, uh, who's also associated with Neptune, Poseidon. Um, I mean, there's tons of names. Pata, yeah, it says here that Odin, the peacock I angel mean, is one of the seven divine beings that also represents the seven mysteries. And in Sumerian, ancient Sumerian, you know, lore, see there's Inky sigil right there on the side of the peacock. That's the sigil and of Inky. And he's got the seven, um, the seven feathers behind yep. it. And that represents the seven original uh, Anunnaki children. I'm pretty sure the children of Enlil and Inky um, before you even get to like uh, Ishtar and Utu Shamash and, uh, you know, down, down that line to Osiris even and Set and Horus. Um, this is cool. It's got a, the background story and it says that um, in mythology, um, when Tawusi Malek which I guess is what we're talking about here. Yes. Yeah. Descended this. to earth, the yeah. seven colors of the rainbow transformed into a seven colored bird, the peacock, which flew around every part of the earth to bless it. And its last resting place was Lalish. Hence in Yazidi mythology, the rainbow was linked to him. So what is Lalish? So Where was he a Phoenix at first or something? Uh, I mean, you could, it says when he was descended to earth and he gets these seven colors, uh, the peacock in a lot of different instances is the same as a phoenix, but it's usually right. in, it's, it's the same it's with the eagle, European right? alchemy, though. Um, but if we're if we're talking about Sumerian, I don't know if the Sumerian and the peacock is identical. I mean, a lot eagle, of people will say it's the same uh, thing because it's convenient. Well, see, the eagle is more uh, of in in Lil's bloodline. Um, Ninurta, his oldest son, who he had with his sister Ninma, that he wore an eagle's mask as his war helmet. Um, so right here it says that that um the descending to the earth as light for the renewal of life on earth. So yeah, that's Phoenix up and down for sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, the renewing of the year. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that so this peacock absolutely seems the same thing as a phoenix. So they, so we're getting our, oh, our yeah. alchemical wisdom from another. But uh, dude, that that weird British tale song Rock. is 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 great, man. It's fifteen minutes, but uh, it's nothing compared to Sleep's uh, one hour song. When and dude, weird tales. Over. If anyone's not familiar, this is like one of the coolest. This is the origin of sci-fi and horror and everything. Um, that awesome we know in like magazine. American culture all really pretty much came from these weird tales magazines. HP Lovecraft got Love that. Uh, his start on all these. And this was before you had TV and um, movies and maybe not before comic books, but this was before it was easy or even like a widely adopted skill that people Mainstream. were doing. Visually. Yeah, for sure, so, yeah. dude. And then this turned into like pulp fiction and pulp comics. And there's a lot of dovetailing where, uh, like the erotic version of this and the horror and the sci-fi all kind of got mixed together because all of them were looked down upon. It was like, don't read about aliens. Don't read about demons. Don't read about, um, you know, like these adult novels. So they would all end up in the same places uh, for sale or like the same publishing houses would uh, adapt all that. And that's kind of where a lot of this like sex and drugs and violence and rock and roll like got its start was because they were all kind of forced to be in like the same like the tension room kind of. Yeah, dude. And I mean, electric wizard embodies that whole, I mean, they have an album called legalize drug, sex and murder, I think. Uh, so I mean, that's they, actually yeah. the current libertarian platform too. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but you know, the, the album name should explain itself. Dope throne. Uh, 
I like just the hills have good. eyes, and it's just a forty-seven second song <laughs> after a uh, eleven minute it, song. <laughs> it's instrumental. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hills have eyes, and mind transferal is also that should be the last song on there. There's nine songs on there. I don't know why mine, but mine oh, so trans- there's, there's a remastered version that okay. has mind transferal. Dude, mind transferal. It's it's literally like. It's a sample. I wish you could listen to it. It's a sample. I think it's something to do with Satanic Panic, like in the 80s, maybe. It's it's sampled from some like documentary or something. It's talking about 666 or something. What's up, Tomcat? <laughs> what's what's interesting is the in the previous one, Dope Throne was a 20-minute song. And in the remaster, it's only 10 minutes, and then you get mind transferal. So it's something they they cut Dope Throne in half no, and then no, added see, mine? Or did they just Dope, split Dope it? Throne went down to 14? I think you were you were looking at We Hate You, which We Hate You is very self-explanatory. They explain so look, that Dope, they Dope hate Throne you. it says it was 20 minutes and 48 seconds. And then in the remaster, Dope Throne is only 10 minutes. So they they basically drop 10 minutes out of Dope Throne, according to this. My eyes were deceiving me, dude. But then they I added the mind transferal else. for. I was looking at mind transferal. I want to see if I can find the lyrics for for this. They have a song called "Magical Child." Here we go. And it's about psychedelic mind transferal. It's 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 pretty cool. Is it on this uh, album? No, it's it's a single. I I think that that they put out. Um. But it's it's one of their older ones. So this is actually kind of cool. Mind transferal sounds like it's uh, telling parents how to identify if their kid is into like satanic rock. Satanic this, yeah, yeah, yeah. How could this happen to my child? How would a parent be aware? Uh, and then it says the clues are there. The satanic symbol 666 written on your child's notebook. If they're into heavy metal, uh, if they're associating with strange characters or drifting off to ceremonies. <laughs> I feel like once you get to oh my kid is drifting off to ceremonies <laughs> like it's a little too far is he like just like easing out the door like sneaking out after dinner <laughs> or is he like astral projecting like and I mean this does sound like a natural evolution right it would it would first it would start as you just do little doodles on your notebook that's pretty innocuous but then you're starting to listen to heavy metal music at least in like publicly so now other people know that you're listening to this music is going to send you to hell and then you start associating with strange characters that's where that's where mom and dad need to step in i think for sure yeah dude the first metal i listened to um was probably like death metal like super like obituary morbid angel um death like the band is called death they have an album named why do you think Le- they're also negative Le- uh I, I don't know slayer was a very you know but slayer's thrash metal you know uh but they they were one of the first bands that i got into uh after like getting into classic rock and stuff as as a kid when i started getting into metal and see how come I, there can be like um like a slayer version but all they do is sing like manly palmer hall philosophy and they don't talk about that would be incredible like, dude. Like, like a cannibal corpse meets philosophy that's a good idea all right we're gonna note that one down that's right. another freebie um but what's funny to me is dude during this whole satanic panic thing they were like trying to zoom in on bands like Kiss and Judas Priest. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? There's a band called Merciful Fate over here talking about like sacrificing firstborns to, you know, uh, Satan. Yeah, but, but you honestly, know, like, they didn't have those pocketbooks, man. Like they weren't, they wanted the groups that they could go after that were on like Interscope and Universal and, right. um, you know, like they wanted right. ASCAP groups. They didn't want someone that was just playing in churches. Well, and also, I think the more that they would like degrade these bands that were more mainstream and really not putting any, well, I mean, maybe some hidden symbolism, but not the blatant symbolism that comes with black metal and death metal. And, you know, um, you know, maybe it, it, it was just to get people to look this way, you know, and not look at all this real satanic music that's getting put out. 
You know, I don't know if you've ever listened to a uh, obituary or morbid angel. I'm not saying that they're like Satanists, but I'm just saying, man, it's 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 uh, it Satanists to sound like it. No, I didn't say that. But if you listen to it, I mean, it's not the happiest music. Um, I mean, you can go listen to Dying Fetus, and just by the name of that band, <laughs> I mean. Uh, unfortunately, musically, they're fucking like great. Like they're incredibly talented musicians. So it's like shit. You know, this song's called Hail Mighty North Forest Trolls of Satan. But I want to listen to it. You know, I want them to play my high school prom now, to be honest, bro. Yes, that would be great, dude. I'll, I'll, I will. Form a dying fetus cover band, and we will play your high school prom. Well, let's let's start with a change.org petition and go from there. Don't get ahead ahead of yourself. There's a reason why change.org exists, and it's for things exactly like this. I hear you. All right, so this was Electric Wizard. Uh, this one sounds pretty awesome too. I'll definitely check out Dope Throne. Yeah, um, dude. I'll I'll move on to let's see. I've got two left. I'll do. I'll do since we're kind of getting into some hardcore. Uh, this is definitely stoner rock. Uh, this is a group called Mephistopheles. Hell yeah! And I think that they're from South America. I think they're like from Brazil or something. Um, I'm sure it's on here somewhere. But they have. I came across this on like some random YouTube playlist, and it was one of those times when I was like completely deep in concentration doing something. And some like one of these songs came on and was like, oh, my God, this is all like I need to find out what music this is so I can add it to my playlist and find out who they are. And I didn't think ahead, but I've got a bunch of Mephistopheles vinyl albums behind me, which are not easy to get because I had to order them through like Poland or something because really they release all their music through like a Polish death metal out like record label. It's it was a pain mm-hmm. in the ass to get them. But I'm just saying that to show that like this isn't just a random group that. I just threw on this list. This is actually a really awesome group and I can't even show some of the other albums that they've done. I don't even want to click off of this page onto their other albums because they are incredibly explicit. Uh, Oh, here we go. Formed in Argentina in 2013. Um, And it's, it's three guys. This album is called whore. And again, (laughs) the only reason that I picked this album is it is, it is the least offensive uh, titled and picture for any Mephistopheles album. So I had to go with the Whore album because it's the most kind of mainstream. It's like the most family friendly. Right. And yeah, they've got, you know, a song called Black Sunday, Whore, Kill Yourself, Curse to Death, Drug Addict, Evil Beauty, and Wizard of Meth. Um, so yeah, Wizard of Meth kind of fits along yep. some of and what we were, we've been talking about so far, right? A ton of heavy drugs falling from the sky right inside my eye the acid trip wears off now my legs are out of sight that sounds like, terrifying life's, life's a hell, hell die young. Young. life's a hell die Jesus now like, come on if, if that's the chorus and oh, man. i love i mean i really really love the the music that these guys create and i think that yeah. one of my favorite albums from them is called um please please don't report me to my my catholic priest like they'll they'll come to my door and like talk me out of this but they've got a song called satan sex ceremonies and uh that's the one that i'm afraid to even search for it on google on a live stream because it's it's very explicit but i believe they recorded the entire thing all analog all analog gear um reel to reel tapes inside of dracula's freaking castle so like they go the extra Whoa. mile to invoke like, this like dark energy that's, into that's their very injury. dark yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, you've seen pictures from uh, that certain party in Dracula's castle, I'm sure. Well, are, are you talking? I don't know what you're talking about. No. The, the Halloween party of uh, maybe uh, I think the guy owns one of the platforms that we're on. Uh, we'll talk about it later if you want. I know this is new to me. So inside Dracula's castle, they were throwing a party. He had a Halloween party in Dracula's castle. Oh, I didn't know that. I remember he dressed up like the devil for some Halloween party. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was in Dracula's castle. That party. Yeah. 
if he didn't have Mephistopheles playing at his party, he missed out. And now he has yeah, to do dude, another you, one. You, you, right failed, you failed at that one. Yeah. If uh, you weren't bumping this. Especially, so I don't, the, I don't the know if I want to read too many of these lyrics out loud because I don't want to have to go back to confession and do a bunch of, um, you know, rose rosaries and all that again. So I'm already like I'm pure of soul right now. I have no well, sin on me, like and I I don't want to invite sin by reading. Uh, for example, well, I guess we'll do the rest of Wizard of Math. They don't know who I am inside. Let me die inside. I don't need <laughs> friends. Got some drugs by my side. Um, very poetic. I mean, they're they're very much wordsmiths. Very fitting of a uh, of someone using methamphetamine. And I think one of their other albums is called Heroin, um, which ah. kind of fits into the theme. I think uh, there's, there's a Bong Ripper album named Heroin. I think Bong Ripper. That's another man. You got Bongzilla, then you got Bong Ripper. Uh, got a bunch of Bongs. Bong bands, dude, basically names everything. <laughs> yeah, but see, like it's it's crazy because I haven't heard of like a tenth of all the different group, let alone the genres that you're dropping on me. So I'll have and to go and do even more research after this. I don't want to be like that, dude, but like, yeah, bro, I can get into a lot more, like even like crazier, like the fucking power violence, you know, thing. We're gonna dive into that at some point. Because I, I think, like I said, you would find that genre very interesting. Uh, it's like hardcore, but sped up like four times. Yeah. And do, do you have sleep left only or do you have more than that? Sleep. Well, I had sleep. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about just this one band. Uh, and there's like a short four song EP uh, that we could talk about, but we could yeah, do what's that. The hmm? What's the band? Church of Misery. Church of Misery? Yeah, it's this band. They're from Tokyo, I believe. Japanese yes. doom metal. They are, every album is about a certain serial killer. Um, well, every song. Uh, there's an album called Born, uh, Born Too Late, which Damn, is insane. Look, look, a look, Saint again, Midas past song. members. Look how many freaking past <laughs> members. Um, and wait, is it say members? Yeah, is it just one guy now? <laughs> is it just one dude <laughs> dude oh no okay here we, go. here we go current we've got we've got oh, there four go. guys All current. Right. i was gonna say that sucks if it's just one guy he'd be that'd be like well, like a uh, local age person. remember do you remember local age or was that before before you i may have been before my time i don't know local uh, age was like two guys and then they had like a like a falling out and then it was just like one guy and it was just crazy because even when it was just two guys like one dude was like singing and playing the drums and the bass and then like he did even more than that afterwards that's awesome dude that's kind of what i want to do right now because i can play bass too right I, I dude, it gets so life. complicated they've got a freaking uh wow. waterfall chart to just show you this is my first time seeing this dude <laughs> So yeah, got, uh, Tatsu Mikami is the one guy that's been there the entire time. So I guess that's why they list him at the top here as members, because he's like the only consistent. Everyone else just comes and goes, it looks like. He has to be the bass player or the drummer, because that's what holds the band together. And these black lines are studio albums. So they've even had, like, for example, this guy, K Kensuke Suto. He joined the band after they had cut an album in 2009, but then he leaves before they cut their next album. So he was in the band, but not long enough to ever like make a lasting impact, I guess, on yeah. being on the album. I don't know. It's, and look, at we've got little blips here, too. Like There's this interesting moment in 2015 when you've got three people join for like a month and then leave. I wonder what that story is all about. Yeah. Scott Carlson. Maybe they, they David something. and Eric. It's like it's also the like only the white dudes. English dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they bring in three studio musicians to like fix some shit and then send them off on their way. <laughs> Bro, yeah. No, I was gonna say like they definitely uh are like yeah. I don't think you belong here because like, dude. Each I mean, so when you look at their music, like every song is about a certain serial killer, and um, it's dark shit. You know, but I mean, this information's out there. Uh, so when I first got into them, 
Of course, I looked into every single fucking serial killer that they were talking about on every song. From uh, Dennis Nilsson to Ed Kemper to, I mean, they write stuff about Jim Jones, Charles Manson. Uh, you can look at their split called Born Too Late. Uh, there's a song. Uh, they don't have well, a link for it on here, but yeah, Born Too Late with Sheevy. I guess. Chevy? Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's the first one that I heard by them, and it's their older vocalist. It's more of a stoner metal vibe than like a harder, like, you know, what we were saying, sludge metal yeah, vibe. Yeah, there's another Rise Above and another uh, Black Sabbath. They So they were being compared to Black yeah, Sabbath. Yeah, dude, they're all... If it wasn't for Sabbath, dude, metal wouldn't exist. I mean, that's just a fact, you know? Well, we would just have a different definition of metal, and it would sound more like Huey Lewis in the news, probably. Yeah, it would sound like shit, dude. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Huey Lewis in the news. I think he was into some sketchy shit. You no, know, Hip to Be Square? That's a good song, dude. Right? Especially... Uh, in American Psycho when he's hacking <laughs> homeboy up. That's that that made me love that song. Um yeah, dude, their album covers are are pretty fucking cool though. You know, well, they have like, a, a one way or another cover. I kind of want to listen to that now. See, I told you, dude, there's a bunch of stuff they have. They have a Saint Vitus cover called War Is Our Destiny. And it's 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 amazing. It's 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 awesome. Um St. Vitus is one of those older stoner metal bands. I'm pretty sure they're from England. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, I'll I'll do my last one, and then we can close it out with uh, Sleep. So the, cool. the last one I picked out is also nowhere on Genius.com. I don't know if it's just because they're not as popular. Uh, again, like, the music that I discover, I don't, when I find it, I rarely know if it's popular, unless it's like I've yeah. literally heard it on the radio or I've seen it in a movie or something, then obviously it's popular, but this yeah. one just came in my, my adventures and I haven't seen many other people even talk about dungeon weed before. Dungeon um, weed. They had an amazing, like some really amazing colorways, I think through Ro Romanus records, shout out to Romanus records. Um, but yeah, yeah dungeon no, no. weed, this particular album is called the mind palace of the mushroom God. Uh, and I'll, I'll have to say that musically I, like the album, but it's a little bit of like a high pitched, screamy, whiny sound to it that might not be. Um, it doesn't fit into all the other stoner rock categories that I've got. A lot of those ones are very monotone, chanting. Uh, they they kind of follow a very specific aesthetic. This okay. one, they kind of come out of the gate and they've they've got like an ACDC vibe to them. The way that he sings, like very nasally and high pitched. But really. They're talking about mind palaces of the mushroom gods, so it's it's hard to not love everything about it. So the, the names of the songs are Orcus Immortalis or Vox Mysterium, Beholder Gonna Fuck You Up, The Sorcerer with the Skull Face, my favorite, which is called Black Pudding, uh, Lumbering Hell, and Mind Palace. And again, you know, that was the one where I was trying to think of where the the Mind Palace song came into. Right, right, yeah. And the whole okay. the whole point of a mind palace to just drive this in, in a little bit more. And again, can you remember? I, I can actually remember. You go through the solar corona portal. You look down on the ground. There's, there's an, an X, X made out of caterpillars. Out of caterpillars. And you see Matthew McConaughey playing, playing the drums, you know dressed as an astronaut. Yeah, right? and, and, and you, you remember the four songs. Yeah. I guarantee you, bro, in like two weeks from now, if we're doing a podcast and I say, Hey, go back through the the solar corona portal. You'll know. You'll see the caterpillar, the X, Matthew. Like they'll that mind palace will exist pretty much forever now. And the reason it exists is because it's so like over the top. Um, like like in fact, a better way to do it is that instead of it being the front door is a solar corona, like your entire house is engulfed in a huge solar corona. Like you you take images and you blow them up so huge that you could never forget it. Um, and that's kind of what this whole mind palace of the mushroom God, it's like, imagine there's like mushroom growing everywhere. Imagine that you see a, a, a sorcerer with a skull face and he's eating black pudding, like just the, the very concept. And this isn't just this album, like all the albums that we've mentioned so far. And this like very stark and vivid imagery 
all these things are tech like every album in my mind is some kind of a a memory palace they don't all necessarily have information that you need to memorize and have like at your ready all the time but this is why i think that there should be like a doom metal manly palmer hall album because now there's a reason to memorize all that stuff yeah dude for sure um i uh like you know i've done vocals for a couple bands so i've wrote lyrics throughout my life especially when i rapped for six years i know it's hard to believe but um you know so i don't know man maybe we'll see i'll uh what's the rougher crowd some Ra- rappers or like hardcore rockers what's what what which one's like the rougher crowd oh no uh it really depends uh like which guess, which crowd are you going home with with a better chance of like getting punched in the face? I'm gonna assume that's rock. But like I don't know, the man. crowd that you might likely go to jail for might more be like the rap. The rap dudes, I don't know, man. That underground scene, especially SoundCloud and with the Memphis revival or whatever, you know, what we were talking about earlier. Um it was real dark, dude. And uh weren't too many good people you know uh <laughs> the the florida rap scene is like i don't want any like i love the the music of it but i don't want anything to do with it man because these dudes are out like cutting albums and like uploading a, a full album on youtube all dressed up driving around in golf carts just talking about all the people that they've killed like the like the real people that they've actually killed in the same city and they'll put it up on youtube and they'll get like arrested for it, and then someone else will kill one of them, and then they'll make a YouTube video. It's it's kind of wild out here, man. I don't know if have that's just Florida, listened? but it's, yeah, it's have definitely you, thick in Florida. Have you listened to Curb Lagoop? Curb Derbel who? Curb Lagoop. He's a white dude from Sarasota, and dude, shout out that guy. He he's he's about the shit he raps about. Curb, I, I you have to say that much. Me dude is uh dude tried to sell me a pint of pint of tussin x on instagram back in the day what know? how do you spell <laughs> how do you spell this uh curb la goop k-i-r-b-l-a-g-o-o-p oh there we go curb la goop <laughs> yeah dude He's fucking awesome, man. He has his own sound and his own style. He and he's never changed, and he doesn't. He didn't give a fuck what people like. Folks will make fun of his voice and shit because I mean, he does have like his own little voice that he does. You know, I mean, he's he's a white guy in in the rap game, and uh, but dude, yeah, he's he's definitely a real one though. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a like um, ignorant Florida rap episode at some point because i've got a thick playlist that is very specific to that subgenre of ignorant florida rap oh dude that's where like a lot of like the underground memphis like stuff revival came from was the raider clan face goes perp from south florida you know dade county um they brought back the whole sampling three six mafia and sampling, you know, eight ball and MJG sampling Tommy Wright the third, all that stuff, and they really uh, like put Memphis back on. And now everyone samples like Skinny Pimp and all that shit. It, it's yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have but Donut on to come and do a Memphis are. rap episode at some point. That's gonna be fun, dude. So we're I'm 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 fun. gonna spread out the rap ones because I don't want everyone thinking that it's only rap, even though it's like definitely my favorite genre. But uh, we can go deep in so many different ones. Maybe next time we're gonna do like jazz. I don't know yet. Hell yeah, uh, and, dude! And what was your last one? Sleep something or other? Sleep. Sleep what though? What what was the album? Called Sleep's Holy Mountain. And this whole album is basically, I mean, you can base it off of the movie uh by alejandro uh jarkovsky or whatever his name is uh called the holy mountain um this album has 
it, this is like my go-to for, for anything stoner metal. I can play this entire album on drums. Me, me and my brother can cover this entire album. Um, it's phenomenal. Matt Pike is one of my favorite musicians. Uh, he was in Soylent Green. Um, the movie? No, the band. <laughs> um he i'm pretty sure he was he 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 was in a a bunch of oh no not soylent green high on fire they're a, they're they're both from new orleans so i'm pretty no never mind they're not from new orleans the the other bands from new orleans they're from california but um they're awesome dude i love high on fire dude, I, they completely slipped my mind, dude. And they tour with a group called Goat Whore, which is another really cool name. This is a New Orleans band. Yes, they are. Um, yeah, they have a uh, shirt that says Jesus is a C word on the back. That's that's the first time I saw. No, I think that's a dying fetus. Dude, I'm, I'm getting now we're getting all the metals conflated. And well, not I'm, we. This I'm, is you getting them conflated. I've got it all. Okay, well, out. all right. Well, you're okay. I'm not now. So, uh, oh, well, this one's got a timeline too. I mean, I haven't <laughs> seen a lot of wiki <laughs> articles that show these timelines. Like, they can't keep, like, a, they can't just keep a drummer. Hardcore Look at the bands, drummer. Man. Well, actually, the drummer was in the band. He's the original drummer. Uh, oh. Him and lead guitar are the yeah, only. Yeah, those two guys. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh, the other guy cut out, I think. But I so, mean, uh, Brian, Brian Patton and Tommy Buckley. Those are the guys that have been there from day one. It looks like 88 through present. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're still doing their thing, dude. A deleted symphony for the beaten down. I kind of like the name of this one. Sludge core. See, the, like the, I hadn't heard of any of these groups or subgenres or anything before this. So. Yeah, well, now you know, dude. And hopefully I don't get any more bands confused and uh, they're, you know, where they come from and all that. So Okay, well, we, we started this one on, uh, on Sleep. Sleep's Holy Mountain. Yes. Uh, 1993, a year, excuse me, year after I, I was born. Um, so, yeah, dude. Uh, have you seen the movie? Gummo, oh yeah, of course. Gum yeah, yeah Gummo is the one where okay. they're watching Belly uh, at the beginning, or no, uh, it's in the movie Belly. They're watching. They're, they're the watching Gummo, Gummo with the kid with the I rabbit was, ears. How the are they watching? And then I went and found Gummo, and dude, Gummo is one of those. I think Gummo and um, can, Requiem can for bark. a Dream. Uh, in my mind, those two movies are movies that like you gotta you have to take a shower after you watch these because you feel like dirty. Yeah, dude, I watch Larry Clark movies at a very young age. So, Kids, yeah, Gummo, movie. Ken Park, What's Up Rockers. Uh, I love indie films, dude. Like and since Bully I was one, I very think I was young, Florida too, because they they take his ass to like the Everglades. Yeah, Spoiler yeah. Alert. Um, but yeah, dude. Uh, this this album is so in that in in that movie. I was, I was, I was going to say this, that scene where they're riding down the street on the bicycles. You can, you, you can pull it up probably, or can you not since it, do you think it'd uh, be a, I can show a, a picture copyright of copyright strike or yeah, probably. If only you could play the scene, dude, because the imagine, scene makes imagine it. Imagine you're, you're hearing the music playing. Yeah, that first song, they're going out, they're Dragon Knot, playing, playing right? they're, they're hunting during that scene, dude. That's what got me. Like, dude, I, I I, saw that movie, heard that song, and was like... And this was in, like, the 8th, ninth grade. Like I said, this was very early on. Uh, I, I was listening to Stoner Metal. Uh, don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, as long as it didn't come from Gummo. If Gummo was the one that introduced you to it, then I think it's a bad thing. Oh no. Uh maybe it did, bro. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I had already heard the sword and like 
some stuff before I had heard, uh, before I had seen that and listened to sleep, but it was all in one year. Did I mean, seen right here, I was definitely wa- like watching gummo, you know? Oh, the scene of him eating spaghetti in the tub. I in can't. The tub, and then the mom I comes can't. in and she's like dancing in the basement. And like, uh, when she starts dancing, I'm like, I'm out, man. This is bro, rough to watch. Bro, it's, oh man, it's almost like David Lynch esque. You know what I mean? Like almost there, but not quite. Um, yeah, this will do. This scene right here is so freaking hard to watch. And it's not even like offensive. It's just the way that this lady is like dancing and he's like shadow boxing in front of the dancing mirror. Dancing to Madonna? Or but they're, they're doing they it in a to? way that's like, oh, th- this is like their daily prayer. Like they do this every day and it's not like out of the ordinary for them. It's like a ritual. Yeah. Yeah, man, that movie, we could do a whole <laughs> yeah. episode on that movie, dude, and symbolism that comes from that movie. Uh, that <laughs> Doesn't the dude prostitute his retarded sister in that movie? Uh, yeah, reg- she's regarded. I'm sorry, dude. You, ha- you have to remember, I-, I don't do 15 of these a week like you, man. They hold her in high regard is what we meant to say. <sighs> That's forgive why we don't me. stream live. Everybody you. forgive <laughs> me, dude. I'm sorry. Um, well, you're streaming live to YouTube. So yeah, I don't <laughs> you care, have dude. I stream Schizo News Network live to YouTube. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> if you keep doing that, channel. you'll see like Nate does. Like the channel's just like, oh, it's it's gone now. It's okay, gone. I know why. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that happens, it happens, man. And I'll uh, I'll make another one, or I'll I'll fuck off somewhere else. Right on. I would say don't don't fuck off it's anywhere. Uh, no, no, I'm not going anywhere, dog. No, dude. Cheney made a good uh, point that I'm going to keep repeating forever now, but it's like never leave the battlefield. Uh, and if uh, that for means sure you not. have to keep forming LLCs and, and shit accounts and alt accounts, just keep doing it and never leave the battlefield. I'm for sure not, dude. Yeah. Um, but this CD, th- this is one of the CDs that I was telling you about that kind of has a pattern to it that flows real good. And uh, by the end of it, you're, you're, you're very... Uh, very satisfied. You're like, I, I, I didn't waste any time. It, that was a great experience. Uh, you know, reptile master sunbound space pod. This sounds like, like David Icke reptilian shapeshifter. Yeah, dude. Theory. Earth drenched in black under starless sky above man on the mountain sets free. The Holy dove. Um, look onto the rays of the new stoner sunrise. Yeah, dude. So, and Sonic Titan, they have a song called Sonic Titan. Yeah, this and, is what the note says. It's like a Seth French French thing. Oh, see, I, I didn't even see that, dude. Um, it's on an album called Dope Smoker. And that album is two songs. One song is o- over an hour long. Uh, I think it's an hour and 11 minutes, 12 minutes, or you can probably see it on there. And then they have a song called sonic titan i think that one's 11 minutes long um great cd y'all should go check it out if you have an hour to uh i'm i'm sure everyone does well, again uh, it's, it's in the link below if you look in the description we've got a, a spotify playlist that's got all the albums that we've talked about today except for the the japanese serial killer dudes but all the other albums of misery about are yeah. on that list yeah dude um uh, but the second song is called the the druid and uh you got uh i mean i don't know if you've seen the holy mountain have you oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah um yeah dude i mean as as you read the lyrics to to these songs it definitely there you go there you go first time i saw that movie i got real scared i'm sure you can guess what state of mind i was in uh yeah, it freaked me out a little bit, man. Well, I mean, there's there's one scene in particular that's I so saw hard beyond, to watch with the freaking um the conquistador scene where they've got like um iguanas fighting these frogs and it's just like pure massacre. And I think that like <laughs> that that scene has been cited as one of the most horrific examples of like animal abuse just for the sake of Hollywood in a long time. But I yeah. think they shot they didn't shoot it in the States. So they didn't have to kind of adhere to some of the same uh, rules that you would expect to. Oh, yeah, of course, dude. I mean. (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, Jules tapped his mic, and now it's muted. You t- <laughs> uh, uh, My mic keeps cutting out, bro. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, the Holy Mountain, highly recommended. So, and this is a short song. This one uh, called The Druid. It's literally like not even 10 lines long. Far within the Oaken Tower exists one with evil power. Magic channeler of earth frustration. The Druid sleeps in meditation. I guess, how long is this song? Five minutes. So I guess they just sing this over and over again, or they sing it really slow. I'm having technical difficulties. Hold I on. can hear you. You're fine. And when when you brought up Sleep too, I I didn't even know Sleep was a metal band. There's also a rapper named Sleep um, that was in Old Dominion, I think. I think that's the name of it. Uh, yeah, Old Old Dominion. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Sorry, man. So, and um, yeah, good choice because Sleep is not a UK band. So you didn't pick all British uh, stoner metal. We got a couple Americans in there. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, no, I, I told you I, I I didn't sell out completely. Sorry, man. My, my mic is uh, acting up on me today. I don't know what's wrong with it. Of course, it would choose today to... Uh, be a bitch but that's right we're i mean we're wrapping up we got we got to all 10 of the albums uh and then some we even did a couple bonus albums yeah bro um but yeah that first song dragon knot man those lyrics i mean yeah dude i mean as a the reptile pushes itself out into space i mean maybe they're talking about dragons or maybe they're as a teenage about kid reptilians. yeah that that shit's awesome dude you know you you read lyrics like that, you're like, oh, wow. Take me there. I want to go there, you know? How much acid do I have to take to go there? So uh, we'll we'll wrap, start wrapping this up. Tell people hey, where man. they can find you. What, what, are you. what the hell are you about when you're not summoning demons by listening to this horrible oh, music? Um, when I'm not doing that, I am uh, grifting for Thomas. Uh, selling, selling uh, stuff for him, and uh, I'm, I'm doing uh, right now. Really, I'm, I'm just trying to reach out to a few people, trying to, you know, uh, just get the podcast out there, dude. I have a couple episodes that I'm going to be recording this next week. Uh, I've been doing uh, Schizo News Network every Saturday. Me, Cody, and Nate. Um, We'll be doing that tonight. Uh, I believe nine o'clock central. So seven, seven Pacific and uh, 10 Eastern. That one's fun for the whole family too. Invite it is. The kids, the grandparents, everyone. Way better than any news you're going to get on TV. So <laughs> uh, everybody tune into that. That'll be on X, on my X and YouTube and on the realities ours, uh, X and Rumble. Um, and I'll add a yeah, dude, stars link to this too. Okay, okay. And then, uh, yeah, bro, I have uh, some Manly P. Hall like little books that I've been kind of reading lately, and I'm doing some reviews on those kind of by myself. Um, but me and Adrian West, the guy who I had on my first episode to talk about like the lost book of Inky, and uh, he had wrote that he had wrote that book, uh, called pantheon one the golden veins um you know shout shouts out adrian man he's he's awesome uh we're gonna do like an anunnaki pantheon series because the nephilim are like huge right now everyone's talking about them you well, they've always been huge. just kind of their thing yeah but now it's getting into the mainstream i mean i've been researching you know i've been reading the book of enoch for over five you know five six years now trying to figure it out and it still all doesn't make sense but um you know i think in order to know where the nephilim come from you have to learn like the sumerian stories and uh so what better way to do that than for someone to literally like lay out these characters and 
who they correlate to in all these other regions of the world uh, when they incarnated as demigods in these avatar bodies uh, coming out from the halls of Amente inside the earth. But I'm a conspiracy theorist, so <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy. Uh, that's just my theory. Uh, but yeah, man, no, we're, we're going to be doing some Pantheon episodes. Uh, we're starting with Anu and going to go down the list. Um, yeah, and uh, just some more stuff coming. Uh, some stuff with my wife on UFOs, uh, you know, that alien phenomenon. She, you know, she's experienced that shit multiple times. So uh, she's going to come on and talk about that. So that'd be fun. And then, I mean, dude, besides that, like I said, uh, I'm just trying to be part of as many discussions as I can. Well, sounds like you got some so, insight on like the stuff we were talking about today. Like a lot of these band members, you said that some of those straight edgers from Florida, like slept on your floor uh, yeah, when bro. you were younger, like dude, reach yeah. out to some of these dudes and get them on. I guarantee you they're not talking about, um, on conspiracy podcasts you know what i mean so let's ask them about 9-11 and okc dude yeah no uh my homeboys band cold hard steel from birmingham they're like this hardcore band uh they're some pretty bass dudes they're they're you know they they all have kids um but i think the guitarist my buddy marco and the singer my buddy tyler uh who i grew up playing hardcore with one's from birmingham the other's from tupelo um I'm like, I mean, Birmingham is um, another NASA um sort of factory, right? So that's probably oh, yeah. Hun- human. that's in Huntsville, I think, isn't it? Oh, you're right. Yeah, that is Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. So uh I think I'm gonna have them on though, just to talk about conspiracies and shit. And uh I got Juan coming on next Friday, dude. Big mistake. If, yeah. Um if he can still do it, uh, I, I asked him if he was still available. So Juan, if uh, you see this, uh, and then Juan, if you don't if show up, you're a coward, coward, man. No, I man, don't say that. If he show, if, you know, if he not, if he has he something show else, up, he's to a do, coward. That's all there is to it. Well, I, all right. Well, that's 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 what Thomas said. Not Jules. Uh, I'll be your I'm champion not, here if you if you need someone to champion you for Juan. Um, I. I I think I'll be all right. I I don't I don't want to step on any toes, you know. And, and I'm, uh, glad, I, I'm glad you I got, got a lot to talk to him about, you know. But yeah, man, go put put your plugs in, dude, because you know, people know where to find me. Uh well, I'm glad you brought up Nephilim because I just released uh a, a interview recently on all my platforms, YouTube and uh podcasts and everything, where we talked to Gary Wayne about Nephilim. He's the one that wrote the Genesis Conspiracy, and he just came out with Genesis Conspiracy part two. And he kind of breaks down everything I've ever wanted to know about Nephilim. Like, this is the dude. Like, he's the one that's got um, the, the longest and most detailed book that does it in, like, a non-cryptic way. Like, there's so many of these freaking books where you start wanting to look into not just Nephilim, but, like, any of these ancient sort of uh, entities and, like, taboo subjects. And it's all dressed up in this, like, over-the-top... Uh, analogies and symbols. And I think a lot yeah. of it is just like fart sniffing. People just want to feel like, you know, they're, they're being extra fancy and Gary Wayne doesn't do that. So shout out, go check for that shout episode. Gary Wayne. Um, yeah, man, no, Gary Wayne. I had started listening to it uh, at work and then got interrupted. So he's I awesome, man. He's the real deal, it. man. He, the, and someone made a really great point in the, the comments in that video. It is that, Gary Wayne, like you could reasonably expect every other answer to someone that's got these books to be like, well, you're going to have to read the book or, oh, that's in chapter seven. And he doesn't do that a single time. Like every, every question he gives you the answer. He goes right into the meat of it. He doesn't dance around. Um, He doesn't say like, oh, you'll have to read the book. And I think that makes people want to read the book even more because it's like, damn, if this dude's dropping nonstop knowledge uh, here on like a live podcast, I wonder what the hell's in the book. So. Yeah, shout out to Gary Wayne. Thanks for coming on. I'll also be uploading an interview with David Ike pretty soon. We're waiting for. I think he already posted I saw it. That so too. I'm allowed to post it now. Uh, that was okay. a huge bucket list. Uh, oh, yeah, and man. I'll say to lead us out here, I'm starting a new idea. I'm gonna start giving all my Patreons 
uh, shout outs in the credits. And it's going to start like real simple first. We're just going to scroll your names in the credits. And if you don't want your name in here, let me know. I'll take it out. But hopefully everyone likes having their names in here. And then maybe this will start to escalate uh, into like making custom songs where like the custom song shouts out whatever your name is. So anyways, I'll, I'll do my first ever credit roll. Uh, thank you to the Patreons and hopefully sort of inspire more people to to help fund what we got going on here. It's not just podcasts. This is the podcasting is the grifting arm of paranoid American. It only exists to grift and to push you all the products. The real, the real stuff we do are comic books, games, art, music, stickers, merch, all at paranoidamerican.com. Uh, Jules knows how sick it is. He's got damn near everything in the catalog. Shout out to Jules. Um, yeah, man. Shout out to you, dude. You've, uh, you know, man, you've, you've, you've really helped me, uh, along starting, starting this podcast and, you know, man, I'll, I'll always tell you, thank you as, you know, and I guess a final shout out to uh, Nate from reality czars. He's also and shout out uh, my buddy, Nate, and, man, and dude, Nate, yeah. uh, Nate helped me get on my legs too. Nate, let me use reality czars as my training wheels. And it was really invaluable because it's the one show that I can go on and we can talk about, you can say literally anything you want. Anything there, you want. He's got yeah. guests on there that say things that are so far beyond the pale of anything that I would even uh. think, let alone say out loud. So it was, it's a very liberating experience to hear someone saying like, just abject filth. Everything I'm thinking. Yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Anything I say after this isn't going to be as bad <laughs> yeah, as what yeah. that dude just said. And there's something liberating about that. Yeah, man. And Nate's a great guy, dude. He's he's so fucking funny, dude. That's why I, I love doing <laughs> I love doing Schizo News Network with him, dude. Is because he brings some of the most crazy shit. On and what what time is that again? It's at nine o'clock central. So that's uh, seven uh, Pacific and ten Eastern. All right, y'all. So. T- Tune in to us, get some news network with Jules and Nate and the rest of the crew, and I'll leave Amen. us with uh, our new credit screen. So, thanks again for all the Patreons. Appreciate y'all. See ya. Thanks, guys. Stay great, Bill. Scribble my life away, driven to write the page. Will it enlight your brain? Give you the flight, my plane, paper, the highs ablaze. Somewhat of an amazing feel when it's real, the real you will engage it. Your favorite, of course, the Lord of an arrangement. I gave you the proper results to hit the pavement. If they get emotional, hey, maybe your language, a game, how they playing it well without Lakers. Evade them, whatever the cost, they are the shape shift. Snakes get decapitated, met is the apex. Execution of flame, you out. Nuclear bomb distributed at war. Rather gruesome for eyes to see. Max them out, then I light my trees. Blow it off in the face. You're despising me for what though? Calculated and rather cutthroat. Paranoid American must be all the blood smoke for real. Lord, give me a day away. Vacate. They wait around to hate whatever they say. Man, it's not in the least bit weak. It heavy rotate when a beat hits. So thank us. You're welcome. The niggas for real. You're welcome. They ain't never had a deal. You're welcome, man, they lack it appeal. You're welcome, yet they doing it still. You're welcome. They love American stickers, cryptids, cults, and killers. killers. We got all your favorite conspiracies. All of that. They want us with the sheets. They're an American stickers. They'll make you smile and snicker. False flags and secret societies. All of these and more on our sticker sheets. Explore the unique with Paranoid American sticker sheets. Unearth tales of cryptids, cults, and mysteries through each sticker. These won't last long. Get yours now at ParanoidAmerican.com. They love American stickers. Cryptids, cults, and killers. Killers. We got all your favorite conspiracies. All of that. They more on our sticker sheets. What the heck are you waiting for? Discover the extraordinary with paranoid American sticker sheets. From cryptids in the night to cults out of sight, each sticker is a unique find. Get yours now at paranoidamerican.com.